Hello everyone, it is I, Zach from the future. It's really weird, in the future I always seem to be wearing the same outfit. And it's not a jumpsuit either, what kind of baloney future is this? So the project we're working on here is called the Mirage Keyboard, and the idea is it's a mechanical keyboard you can either use as a regular plank keyboard, or you can break it in half, use it either as a split keyboard or a number pad. And last stream we had finished designing the the case for the, the, the full size one. So for this, we're trying to take that and modify it to uh, create the, the one handed ones. Yeah, it involves some highly technical printing, involves some, some weird assembly, uh, it involves doing some things with Fusion that Fusion is not totally okay with. Yeah, past this point, what you see on the stream is a preview of what you're gonna see in an upcoming video. So anyways, Without giving too much away, prepare for, uh, well, a colorful experience with a little bit of colorful language. Enjoy the show. Ladies, gentlemen, cyborgs, and especially uh, the Dread Par Roberts, my dog, who I put these streams on to help him fall asleep. Welcome to Void Star Lab. We've officially made, uh, not, we officially made partner. It's weird how Twitch does this. Usually affiliate just means like, here to use this code and make money and partner means like we have a business we have a business agreement like briefcases have changed hands uh but on twitch it's the opposite it's very confusing check that out we got our subscription look at that we got our subscription i made a little animation i had it i made it like I made it like tooth the hype train yeah check that out yeah we're not doing any friggin running zombies here we're better than that um yeah i imagine that this first time we're gonna get a lot of uh gonna get a lot of subscriptions so if i miss you i'm very uh i'm very sorry uh but yeah let's uh let's thank some f yeah let's um let's talk about what we're gonna do today and then thank some folks uh what we're gonna do today is we're gonna finish up our project we have a couple things we have a couple things to do here the first first is um to basically take what i uh i basically already built a <laughs> that's gonna get very distracting <laughs> Uh, let me, let all, you, all you folks in TV land, let me know if you, uh, let me know if that, if that sound effect is getting boring, because I can rig it up to, uh, yeah, I can, I can rig it up to, um, uh, not, not toot every time, or, or even disable the tooting briefly. Um, yeah, Th well, thank you very much to everyone subscribing. I'll thank, I'll thank everyone in a sec, uh, because here's what we're going to do today. First off, uh, <coughs> Working on this keyboard, this mechanical keyboard project, and the idea of the keyboard... Oh, you can't hear it? That's weird. Oh, wait, what? That sh should work. Let me see, let me, uh... Let's see here, what's, uh, what's, what's, what's going on? What's, what's going on here? What's going on here? What in the actual heck is going on? It should be going out through the... Through the speakers. All right, there we go. That should should work. Let's let's see. All right. Huh. That's weird. It must have been sending it to the uh, the. It must have been sending it to the other audio. Um, oh, I must be capturing the wrong audio because I've been working on the next episode, so I've got my I've got my monitors set up. So it must have been sending it to the monitors because I could hear it. Um. Anyways. Oh, right, I have, we have a bunch of things to do. So, uh, yeah, we're making this mechanical keyboard project that's going to make part of, that's going to become part of a cyber deck. And, um, yeah, uh, I've built, I made all the pieces. We still haven't put them all together yet. I want to see how that looks. I made it, I continued working on it a little bit after the stream was done. But for the most part, all the stuff was made during the stream. And we will take a look at that shortly. Uh... So some other stuff. Yes, uh, we're, 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 we're collecting subscriptions and bits now. I'm still getting used to all this. So um, I'm going to try to thank everyone. And uh, I'm going to try to thank everyone, but it's likely I'm going to miss some folks, especially in this first one. Uh, next up, this episode sponsored by Next PCB, your place to get all kinds of PCBs with all kinds of features uh, for a decent friggin' price. I don't really like saying that it's cheap because it makes it sound like it's it's not inexpensive it's cheap but it's inexpensive and uh, what's cool about next PCB is that they offer all kinds of useful features that you sometimes don't even see in domestic in like domestic PCB manufacturers unless you're listening from China in which case you do see them in domestic PCB manufacturers 
Uh, anyways, next PCB offers all kinds of stuff like multi-layer boards, uh, internal routing. You can do drill hits spaced close together, 4 mil trace in space. This is stuff that you usually have to pay premium prices for, but uh, they'll they'll make it and ship it to you uh, at a price that any hobbyist can afford. And that's really important because this project, this mechanical keyboard project, isn't really doable without that kind of option. So thanks a lot to Next PCB for sponsoring the projects and the streams. And uh, thanks to everyone who's been... Uh, Who's been subscribing? Moto 2600, Dills 42, uh, Luxuriant Squish. Let's see, who else? Luxurious Squish, G, G Gamble, Craft Xbox, Zoster, A Blade of Kitten, Akalia, uh, Z, uh, let's see, Z Keepa, Moist Dust, uh, Project 454, uh, Yellow Shirt Larry, Tinster, Kronholm, Wow, got a whole bunch. Uh, yeah, thanks a lot to everyone for uh, for subscribing and supporting. I really, uh, really appreciate it. So let's see. Oh no! All right, my mic, my mic's all right. All right, I'm a little behind the eight ball here because I've been spending all my time working on the next uh, the next uh, next episode. A lot of filaments going on. Uh, that I'm gonna give it a few days because we're. Oh hey, who is this? E Pun Man. Uh, Epon man, thanks a lot. So, uh, let's see here. Um, man, it's gonna, it's gonna, I shouldn't have turned the sound effect on. I wish there was a way to turn the sound effect on for me, but not for you. Oh, I'll just mute my volume. Is that gonna work? Is that, does that, does that work? Are you gonna be able to hear it, but I won't? I don't, I don't think so. I think I'm gonna have to physically unplug my speakers. da 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 I don't remember which one of these chords is my speakers. I don't remember. I give up. Anyways, um, yeah, I realize I don't have, I barely have anything running here. Uh, we gotta turn on the bot first off. Gotta turn on the bot. Come on, bot, get your life together. Um, what else do we need? Oh, the frickin' controlling the chromance, of course. Let's see. Let's open up Windows subsystem for li Linux, and let's get that, uh, let's get that thing going. Alright. Local hosts. Slash. I think, yeah, local 7800 slash Twitch. Chat W led master. Okay, we are live. Um, finally, let's turn this a little bit so everyone can see the patrons. Yeah, everyone can see the patrons scrolling. This is very important. Let's get up. Let's open up Sublime Text. I've been I missed a couple. Project four five four. Thank you very much for the sub. Terrible tally. Thanks a lot for the sub. Behaving Beaver. Era Juan forty two. You folks all completely rule. We get that. Let's, let's what, what, what do we got going with the hype train? Ah, oh, we got. Oh, if you uh, if you subscribe, you get a little bonus here. Yeah, I haven't. Um, the, I have a small number of emote slots open, and I just haven't had a chance to set them all up yet. Nested Dreams, thank you so much for the super generous ten subs. I have never even seen that icon before. I forgot to. I forgot to uh, to customize that one. But yes, oh, thanks a lot. Wow, giving giving away all these subs. So yeah, you're um, uh, what's how does this work here? So now that I'm a partner, I believe. Yeah, now they're gonna be ads in front of the streams. So there's nothing I can do about that. I, I don't think I can actually disable that, and it really sucks. I would prefer to disable it. When I did YouTube, I never. When uh, I did YouTube streams, I never turned on, like, video ads, because I just... They're, they're distracting when it comes to streams. There's nothing I can really do about that, though. Although, speaking of ads, it does let me now... Uh, I can set up a commercial break, so I can hit one button, and it plays, 30, it plays, like, 30 seconds of ads, so I can go take a poop or something. I mean, maybe not a poop. 30 seconds is an awfully rushed poop. Anyways, let's get ourselves back over to our to-do list. So... The first thing on, uh, so this is the same as the last stream, the same as Friday's stream, we're just continuing our efforts. 
And uh, well, you'll notice that the first, the thing up, up top there, make a new clip for the Optigon, it totally worked. So yeah, that's what I'm wearing right now. That's right, we're now using the heads up display during streams. Let's see, subs watch the streams without ads. Says nested dreams, but ads might still roll. I think that's up to me. And Brooke finally came back. Oh, the dog is going to be so excited. Dread pot. We had a dr dread Power Roberts encounter. I have the I have the door open because it's with all these printers running. It's hot as heck in here, and uh, it allows a certain dog to to come in. Uh, Moist Dust asks, "How is the Clippy printer for the Optigon working out?" And it looks like you have a first. Oh, look at that. Uh, you got a little first sticker next to your name. That's cool. It shows you one of the first people to subscribe. Uh, yeah, the clip is the clip is holding up fine. Uh, let's see. Let's get this thing booted up. Should have enough power to charge it overnight. Uh, yeah, let's boot it up. So yes, I should be able to keep an eye on chat on the heads up display, which will come in handy if I'm moving around the workshop and other stuff. Isn't that sick? So, uh, yeah, let's get this thing going. So, let's see. So, we've already made the clip. Actually, let's just, let's just get, get rid of this. Um, we've cut the, done the PCBs from Fusion. So, we made the all-in-one enclosure, right? So, this key, so basically what we're doing here, let me, uh, here, let's, 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 let's take a look at my screen. Come over, come here, come hither, children. Uh, also, welcome to everyone who hasn't followed me from YouTube. I always, uh, yeah. Oh, what the? Why? Why is my face missing? Come on, face. What? What? Come on, face. Where are you? Get over here, face. There we go. Alrighty. So, yeah, uh, I've made a few changes. Um, like, we've added a little branding to it. Uh, I, I changed it around a bit. See, there was... The way I had this originally designed, there was nothing connecting this strip right here. So it was kind of flapping free, and I re so I realized that there, I realized that we only need to c cover up the top here, right? We can expose the circuit board in the bottom. It's actually a good thing because this project is sponsored by a circuit board manufacturer, and I want to show off their product. So yeah. Uh, anyways, you'll no so check this out. So this is the circuit board here, and you'll notice that it's got these these mouse bites and things in the center, so we can split it in half. And if you didn't tune in for the last episode, allow me to bring it up to speed. This is a low-profile mechanical keyboard that you can split in half to turn it into a split keyboard or a keypad. Yeah, isn't that sick? Split, yeah. Uh, so you can make this into a number pad if you already have a keyboard. So what's going on here is uh, we've, we've made the... Uh, so last time we made the all-in-one enclosure, the enclosure for like using it as a 60% Plank-style keyboard. Uh, today, I think we will take this design, extend it a little further. Yeah, take this, uh, extend it a little further, and, um... Laundry. <laughs> Brooke doesn't want you to see our laundry. Uh, let's see, yeah, we're gonna take this further and turn it into the two split halves. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, let's get this, let's get this going. So... Yeah, we have to. I have to update the to-do list a little because it's not. It's not quite accurate right now. So we can design the right enclosure. Design. Let's see. Design the right enclosure. Design the left enclosure. Let's untab this. Oh, I don't think we're going to. Uh, let's see. All right, there we go. Cool, cool, cool. So yeah. Um, actually, I want to do something else first. Might, we're probably not going to get to 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 firmware. Let's, let's actually let's actually I'm now the thing about this. Let's let's consolidate these. Design split enclosure fabri fabricate split enclosure so we can strike these. Uh, but we probably want to assemble unify assemble a single enclosure because uh, I've printed all the pieces. But we haven't. We, I just haven't put them together. So thanks a lot to yeah. Thanks a lot to everyone who. Let's see here. Thanks a lot to everyone who's been uh, who's been subscribing and all that. I really appreciate it. Got to get this uh, got to get this thing kicked off right. Yeah, I'm sorry the next video has been taking so long. By the way, there's just so much going on, uh, but it's coming together. I'm about a uh, about a third of the way through cutting it. We have 24 filaments, I believe. I'm still waiting on one of them to show up, sort of. 
It's actually two. Uh, the filament, the filament that I'm waiting to show up is PEI. I realized that I just, in terms of high temperature film, like originally I was, I was just going to talk about it because it was very, very expensive. So originally I was just going to talk about PEI, but um, I realized it was just such an important filament in terms of like, just, it's such an important film in terms of uh, its use for high temperature printing. Like, it's one of the two quintessential high temperature filaments, and of all the high temperature plastics, it's the only one that most people are already familiar with, because, you know, you probably have it on your 3D printer already. So, um, yeah, I, I just, I realized I couldn't just... I, could, I had to do it. So I got in touch with Matter Hackers, and I convinced them to send over uh, both of them. There are actually two grades of PEI filament. There's 10, Ultim 1010, Ultim 9085. And they're sending those over. Hopefully they show up today. It might take a few days to actually get it to print. But uh, yeah, I, I'd, like to, I'd like to hold off on releasing that until that stuff shows up, because I think it's just such an important filament. Um, but yeah, but it's coming together. Uh, lots of interesting stuff. Uh, lots of cool filaments. Yeah, I'm pretty excited about this. I don't. Yeah, folks in chat are folks in chat are talking about uh, how to block Twitch ads and uh, possibly using Pie Hole. Yeah, something must be working because as far as I can tell, I've never seen a Twitch ad, and I don't subscribe to anyone. So maybe you block Origin Works. I have no like. Yeah, maybe I'm biting the hand that feeds a little bit, but. I don't really like Twitch ads. I don't think they add a lot. The amount I make off Twitch ads is the amount, the amount like someone like Ninja makes, who has like seventeen thousand viewers at once off Twitch ads is negligible. So the amount I make is effectively zero. So um, thanks to everyone who's who's bowled your way through the ads. I really appreciate it. So without further ado, uh, let's. Uh, Let's get rolling. First, first, let me take a look at this. I, there is a way for me to show you what I'm seeing on the heads-up display, but it's so clunky. Oh, is this not turning on? What's going on? I charged it last night. Why isn't it turning on? Oh, man, it didn't charge. I had this thing going all last night. That sucks. Uh, let's see if I can grab a... Let's see if I can get this charging off a battery. Let's see if I can get a... Let's see if we have a we have a right can I find a right angle USB cable perhaps this is my this is my box my big box o cables I got this organizer at I think it had some sort of maker fair here let's switch over so you can actually see what the heck I'm talking about pardon my language why does this never work the first time the overhead camera never it, it never works the first time there we go. Yeah, I got this, this, not, not the, not the, not the, the adapters, but the, um, not the adapters, but the, uh, the, the box at Maker Fair a long time ago. Ripperoni and Pepperoni Maker Fair. Uh, yeah, and everyone should have something like this. Yeah, these, these are all my, these are all adapters. Like, some of them are USB adapters, some of them are HDMI adapters, video transcoding adapters, all kinds of weird cables. Yeah, and I had hoped I had a USB at a right angle. I used to have a right angle USB micro in here, but I don't think, I must have, I must have stuck it in a project. Yeah, this isn't, this isn't quite it. This is, um, this is USB on the go. So it, Kind of the wrong end of the ice cream cone. Well, crap in a hat. This sucks. I don't know why it didn't charge last night. Sets up display has problems. It's, uh, it's very, it has very much passed the end of its life. It hasn't just reached the end of its life. It's, uh, it's, it's certainly, it's certainly gone further than, uh, than it, sh than it was ever intended to go. So it doesn't look like I have a right angle. I'm just worried about snap. If I, if I snap the USB port off this thing, it's it's all over. That's it. Channel's done. Party's over. Everyone go home. Uh, how about this? Is this, uh, yeah, this will work. It's like a thin cable. Alrighty. Now, do I have a, a USB hub that doesn't, or a USB power bank that doesn't weigh a ton? No, this is all I have. So, uh, yeah. Okay, so we'll char let's charge this thing up. Hopefully. I don't know why it didn't charge last time. Sam, 
I'm salty to say the least. It's a highly, a highly saline state of affairs right now. Ah, right here. Oh, there's something funny going on with the with the chromats. What's uh, what's going on there? The commands aren't turning on all the lights. Uh, let's see. I forget the IP address of this thing. One nine two one six eight. Oh no! I've spoiled my IP address. Everything is one nine two one six eight dot x dot. 25 i think yeah there we go uh so let's see we want this to control the segments i think if i turn them all off is that gonna do it oh that's making them random colors it's it seems like the presets and stuff aren't um aren't controlling everything Let's see. I think that should I think that should stabilize things enough. All right. So let's plug this guy in. Thycam. Plug this into the heads-up display and shove it in my pocket. And hopefully that charges it enough cuz I really want to give this thing a shot. Yeah, using the heads-up display during streams was something I've been I've wanted to do for ages. It's taken so long to it just I just could never get anything meaningful out of it on YouTube. So yeah, let's uh, let's see what we've been. Let's see what we're making here. See what we well, not what we not what we're making. Let's actually see what we've made. So we uh, yeah. So I, I made these letters, right for for branding purposes. I realize this X for the uh, technically the cross should probably be uh, probably be red. But yeah. So ah oh no, it snapped apart. So I th the boards haven't shown up yet, but that's no excuse not to test. So uh, I printed these, I printed a mock-up, and uh, maybe we can, the question is, will the, will the switches actually fit in it? I kind of doubt it. We're probably, if we wanted to fit switches in, oh, hey, it's a puppy. I would uh, probably have to drill out the holes, which might not be a terrible idea now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah, here we go. Let's actually move this a little closer. Yeah. There we go. Yeah, I think we'd have to drill this out. It didn't come out very, uh, very accurate. Yeah, the holes. I used low quality plastic for this mock-up. Anyways, this is about what the boards are going to look like. I realized that I've made a actually a major. Oh, geez, I ran over my ran over my uh, my thread inserts. I realized I made a huge mistake with this. Uh, let's see here. Yeah. I've realized uh, I made a huge mistake with this keyboard in that I only put 57 keys on it. So I was using, uh, the, what, what, what happened was I was using an older des design reference. Basically I made a little sketch and uh, that, was for the, the, that was for just using it as a cyber deck. And the reason this causes problems is because the cyber deck is going to have a handle with more buttons on it. So I put fewer buttons on the keyboard, right? I put fewer switches in the keyboard because some of them were going to be on the handle. And if the keyboard's going to be used standalone, only 57 keys means you're going to have to use layers for things like uh, arrow keys and whatnot. And uh, I don't think most people are going to find that acceptable. So this is only an interim design because at some point, I'm going to have to add more keys onto this. I think I'm just going to add one more row. I think that's the best way of, best way of doing it. Uh, Error Raider says the print looks kind of rough and weird looking. Yeah, it's... This is intended to be a disposable. This is just a stand in. The only the, the only thing that really matters in here is the uh, is the silhouette. So I used uh, the lowest quality filament we had left, and I printed it at an extra high speed. So it is extremely rough. It also looks kind of ragged around the edges because it's got these. Uh, the, remember the stitching vias? It actually tries to print those. So uh, it pr it prints them too close to the edge, so it ends up all ruffled and and weird. Uh, it would take too long to reprint. It's but again, like it's it's. It's, it's fulfilling its purpose, which is simply be the correct size. So yeah, these are the older revisions that we worked on during the stream. Mr. JSDH says, how could you keep the edges from lifting up? Uh, for something this thin, it's unlikely that uh, anything's gonna curl. Curling occurs when the stack, curling occurs when, when as a layer prints, it heats the layer under it and it sort of stacks up and, cur and curls. So very flat prints don't tend to curl. The hard part was getting it off the plate without breaking it. 
that was the, so for that I just used a ton of glue and I poured water all over it to melt the glue before I started trying to peel it off. So yeah, so these are the versions we worked on before. This is the, the, uh, this is the final version. So you'll notice the ones that I'm showing other than this are uh, a single piece, but to speed up prototyping, I, uh, printed, I printed them all in one piece. But the real deal is going to have two separate pieces so that it can fit on a build plate of a Prusa or an Ender. So yeah, I did test this. It does, it does work. It fits together pretty nicely. So this is the first revision. You'll notice it's got the rim that goes all the way around it. Yeah. And here's the second, here's the second revision. It looks very similar to the first, except uh, some of the dimensions tightened up. And uh, let's see, this is the, the, oh, the penultimate revision. The, uh, you can see it's now all in one. You can see that the, here, compare over here. You see that I took, the rim used to be here. I'm gonna put this one on top, because it's new. But now the rim stops, because only the top part here is enclosed. And uh, now let's move on and take a, let's move on to our, uh, let's move on to our, the version I printed last night. This is the most up-to-date one. It's the one we're gonna be moving forward with. So yeah, let me think how are we gonna do this. Uh, can we get a camera on it? Why? Why does this never work the first time? Why? Oh, it would help if I plugged it in, wouldn't it? Like vault. Thanks to everyone who's subscribing and uh, and bitsing and commenting. Uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Who do we? Uh, there's got to be some way for me to go back. Uh, let's see. Uh, Chronome says, I know it's too late now, but did you consider thumb clusters? I certainly did. Uh, I certainly considered it, but uh, basically thumb clusters mean make, put, instead of having like a space bar, put like little bits off to the side, like on my Ergodox, uh, that, um, uh, like, so you can use your thumbs to, to control some buttons. The problem is it just didn't, it didn't play into, why is this working? I'm really confused here. It's plugged in. But it's not lit. It's not lighting up. Let's see. Did something get uh, something get unplugged here? Did I break another cam link? Must did I break another one? No way. I couldn't. How could I? No way. Why is this working? What the heck's going on here? Why why is nothing ever work right? Ugh, come on. The light's not even turning on. For crying out loud. Maybe if I... See, I actually have two of these USB extenders. Is this going to work? When I hit activate, the light turns off. I'm really confused. Uh, what the heck? I'm really confused. <laughs> All right, I guess uh, I guess the capture card is not um, not playing nice. Uh, anyways, yeah, I can't I can't put thumb clusters on this because because uh, uh, then it wouldn't work well on a cyber deck. It would uh, it would be it would kind of be the wrong the wrong dimensions. Tebla, thank you so much for the f gifting five subs to viewers. That rules. You should be able to put a message in there, and I hope I should see it. Um, anyways, what, hey, what's going on here? Nessa Dreams, thanks a lot for gifting a sub to Lydio. I really appreciate it. I don't know what, what's going on here, though, because this is definitely powered up. Oh, man, all right, enough's enough. Well, that sucks. Is it? Yeah, it's Camlink 4K. That's that's really weird. I don't know why it's not working. Because the camera itself is totally working. Oh! 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 It would help if the other end of the cable was plugged in too. Oh my god. Welcome to Void Star Lab. Did I mention I'm a professional pro product developer and and content creator? Ugh. Still doesn't work though. Okay. Hey, it's a puppy. 
Uh, all right, still not, it's still not working. At least the light's on this time. Deactivate, unplug it, plug it back in, activate. Are we good? No, we're not. Oh, why? Don't worry, I'm not gonna spend all day on this. Let's see. Oh, oh, there, oh, yep, oh, woo, yeah, there we go, okay, there we go, all righty, this is what I get for, for working too hard on the episode, and not, um, that's what I get for working too hard on the episode, and, uh, not figuring out my camera stuff in advance, literally everything is falling apart, so, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's get this off, so we've got here, I didn't know what colors to make the buttons so yeah let's see the lulz bot doesn't seem to be remembering its level it's, it's really awkward to get in from this position ah look yes you can, you can see that i do in fact have a lower body all right so We've got this cosmetic plate up here that I just cracked trying to remove it. The lulz bot isn't remembering the baby stepping settings after I shut it off. So if I forget, so if I just start a print after, re after rebooting the printer, it mashes the filament into the plate and I can't figure out how to get it to save that. Oh, it's sticking on my prints to the friggin' plate. Okay, so over here we've got uh, the OLED buttons so you've got the OLED buttons and we've got this uh, this applique thing that the branding stuff is going to go on and then let's turn our attention over here I printed the main shell out of fusion filament HTP plus who subscribed ah our Elysium is gifted a sub to a viewer thank you very much so let's get this uh, let's get let's get this out of here uh, we're gonna, we still need to print a couple pieces. Ooh, that came off too easily. I hope it hasn't worked too much. Nope. Nope, it's just the magic of the magigoo. And then finally... No. Wait. Oh, why, why you gotta do me like this? There we go. Gonna go into the other room and grab the rest of them. I wasn't sure whether to print these in blue or purple, so I printed them in both. I'm using kind of weird colors here because, um, well, first off, I like weird colors, but also, I'm, we have a lot of filament. Oh, hey, uh, who subscribed? The Loki, thanks so much for the subscription, I really appreciate it. So, yeah, we have tons of filament coming in, and um, I have to, that means I've, I, I gotta use the old filament. So, uh, yeah, let's have a little bit of a color scheme going here. Got our, our Fusion HTPET in Void Star Green. This is probably, like, I'm kind of obliged to say this is my favorite filament because it's it's the color of the channel in in PET, which, as you all know, I love PET. So before we get before we get too deep into this, um, I think we should start printing the final two pieces. I, uh, let's see. So, yeah probably start printing the final two pieces those are these right here that will cover up so here's what happens so here's what's, what's what, we, what we got going on here we've got the uh, the, the body the bottom of the keyboard the two, the boards which will be one board when you get it just rest in there screw 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 or actually screw screw we've got these bits up here that cover the top and kind of make it look finished we've got these little apples these uh, appliques go uh, one up here and one over here. We've got our buttons over here. And that's it. That's our keyboard. So we have to reprint these. I changed the style a little bit. You'll notice that this looks a little bit more bulbous than this. Yeah, it was looking a little too bulbous. And uh, I didn't want it to look bulbous. I just like saying bulbous. It's a very fun word to say. So, yeah, let's... Uh, totally bulbous, dude! Oh, this bulbous man. So yeah, let's turn our attention back over to our distilled water. <laughs> over to the tool changer. I'm going to 
pour on more Magigoo because you can't mess around when it comes to PETG. This PETG will stick to your plate and rip chunks out of it, especially this high temperature crap. So even though this already still probably has some Magigoo left, I am not taking any chances. We're gonna goop it up. This HTPT curls a little more aggressively than the standard stuff. So yeah, Moist Dust says, where can we buy Void Star Green Filament? I actually, early on in the channel's history, I was talking to this gentleman who worked for a company called Greengate, who by the way is sponsoring the contest. I totally freaking forgot. Uh, so I freaking forgot. Uh, yeah, the the Void Star, the Void Star cross lull spot, cross things contest. Uh, the Hallow Wearables is coming. The deadline's coming up. It's only it's just over two weeks, maybe more. Maybe it's like three weeks. Anyways, I'm challenging you to make any anything wearable. Any if it's wearable, if it's 3D printed, submit it on things, and uh, you can win a lull spot printer or fifteen hundred dollars plus five kilos of ultra of super high quality. Uh, super high quality PET filament from uh, right here in America. It's it's yeah, it's a great contest and a bunch and the winners and whatever ones I like are going to appear in an episode for Halloween. So people can, will build your projects and yeah, you get to be all you get to get senpai's attention. So um, yeah, make sure make sure you enter that. Uh, looks like Dills42 took the initiative and and uh, pulled up the contest links and link in video, so make sure you check that out. Uh, it doesn't, you don't have to build like a super elaborate wearable computer like this. It, all it has to do is be wearable and it has to be 3D printed. So you can make fashion stuff, you can make technology, you can even make cosplay. We have, uh, I, I made, um, I made special judging criteria for all three of those categories. So your project gets, evalu so your project gets evaluated on its own merits. Yeah. Uh, where I, uh, why I picked this particular contest because I like wearables and Halloween, you know, you get to wear anything, you don't have to worry about people judging you, but also wearables tend to be small projects. So this is a reasonable challenge to do in the time frame. I could have given you months, but I know you're going to do it in the last week anyways, so why bother? So yeah, make sure you enter that. In the meantime, let's turn our attention back over here and let's print the, uh, let's print these last two parts. So we're going to do some 3D, we're going to do a 3D print. Yeah, I set up Super... Su so now I have everything going through Super Slicer. I now have profiles set up for all of my printers. Except the Viper, but the Viper is still not working. I'm not... I got, I got, I got problems with the Viper. But uh, yeah, we're now running everything through Super Slicer. It's working fine. I actually need to update Super Slicer. Uh, top bar left. Yeah, so let's get these printed. This will probably take a, an hour or two. But uh, we can still prepare all the rest of the all the rest of the stuff. So let's open up. Here we go. Let's go. Oh, I stored this in the downloads folder. The downloads. Uh, all right, there we go. Let's. Uh, where's our super slicer at? Here we are. So you can see it's got uh, the squire, the Sultan of Squirt. It's got the Prusa in it. Well, we got a we had a hundred people. Excellent. Yeah, I am really surprised at how quickly Twitch moved. I, I was kind of I was kind of surprised. I thought they would dawdle. It was actually the plan. The the reason why I kind of slow rolled it was because I expected Twitch to dawdle on it, which would give me a chance to to reach out to them and to get some FaceTime. <laughs> Prof Bagel, thank you so much. Thank you so, thanks to everyone who's uh, who's kicking off our uh, kicking off our. Our sub count. This is uh, this is great. We're gonna build this up. Really, I'm really excited. Uh, subscribing is more of subscribing. What's what should I call it? It's like demands more of a commitment than uh, a super chat. Except for everyone using Prime Gaming. Anyways, uh, I, so I really appreciate. What I'm trying to say here is I really appreciate everyone who uh, who's supporting the channel. So let's see. We're doing Fusion High Temperature PET. Uh, we can print this slow. And uh, let's see, let's do it kind of fast. Let's see, we've got, I made profiles here for fast, really fast. And I should have one here for kind of fast. Fast, not slow. Uh, let's see, I thought I had one for like sort of fast, but not really fast. I guess not. Uh, all right, so let's, um, let's run this. Let's see, oh yeah, here we go. 0.2 millimeters fast. Uh, we're going to turn on a brim. We want supports everywhere. 
let's see. Yeah, because we have this we have this lip here that's got it supported. I cham I chamfered it just in, to try to reduce the amount of infill we needed, but look, we'll see what happens. Uh, so let's slice it up. We're doing HTPET. We're printing this a little a little hotter. I mentioned the so in the episode I'm going to say it prints at 270, but I was wrong. 270 is the temp is the temperature you print it at. If you're printing it slowly, if you're printing it 30 millimeters per second, if you're printing it faster like we are, you actually print it 285. 285. It's hot as heck. So this is going to take an hour and a half. Excellent. So I'm gonna, I, let's just make sure this all works right. We're going to make we're going to forcibly tell we're going to tell it to print uh, with extruder one, because that one that's the high temperature ones loaded with the filament. I mean, all of them technically could, um, all four of them technically could run filament this hot, but I am running it through, uh, uh, ooh, oh, we have a little bit of a, oh, it fell off. I should probably put that back on. <laughs> uh, yeah. Let's let's get this thing printing. All of them technically could print it, but uh, I want to keep the high temperature filaments on the leftmost nozzle. Oh man, it fell off. Ah, uh, I hope it didn't. Hope nothing bad happened. Ah, uh, it fell off. It melted its way onto the. Let's see, it melted its way through the foam layer that I put down, just in case something gets dropped. It's pretty rare. Um, yeah, it's pretty rare that something like that happens. Uh, I think what what probably happened in this case is um, something must have gone wrong when it was printing. Uh, the keyboard fills the entire the, the keyboard fills almost the entire plate, and I have the bounds. I think I have the bounds set wrong, so it, I think it crashed the extruder into. Um, Let's see. I, th I think it crashed the extruder into one of the clips that holds the plate on. Let's see. I want to make sure this doesn't start while it's still moist. Yeah. Well, let's just, uh, what, let's see. So this, this crash of the foam, it's, it's going to get a little hot. Uh, we should be able to just wipe it off, though. Let's see. This giant battery is, is pulling my it's pulling my hoisin down. Ugh. Let's get in here. Wipe that nozzle. Come on, nozzle. It's a nozzle X, so uh it's got this non-stick coating. Actually, gonna, see, gonna grab myself a little, little brass brush. Give it a little brushy brushy. Yes, I know. I know there's. I know there's a brush mounted on this, but uh, it's the wrong height for the. Uh, it's the wrong height for the Titan Aqua and for the volcano, so it can't actually brush itself. But yeah. Let that guy let that guy print. Luxuriant Squish says there goes a non-stick coating. It's it's made of stronger stuff. Actually, we're going to pause it for a sec because there's still a little bit of. Uh, we're going to pause it for a bit because there's still a bit of a uh, magigoo. Let's dab off some of the excess. Let's dab on that. Dab on them haters. Still a bit of uh, magigoo that's not set. So we're going to let that idle for a few minutes. I keep forgetting how quickly this heats up. Uh, but this is by far the fastest heating printer in the in Void Star Lab. Uh, let's see, Electro Space, oh, I think. Thanks for the follow. Yep. If I got my robot helping me out, but uh, yeah. Uh, Avish 4 y says, would you recommend Super Slicer for Prusa? If you've already used if, if, if you've already used Prusa Slicer heavily, uh, and Basically, I'd say if you print with a wide variety of different printers, and you um, if you use a wide variety of different printers, and you like to get down and dirty in the nitty gritty, uh, like the nitty gritty settings, 
then uh, I would definitely recommend upgrading from, or side grading from Prusa Slicer to Super Slicer. It's not a straight upgrade because uh, Prusa Slicer is a little ahead of uh, Super Slicer. Super Slicer is a, a fork of Prusa Slicer, but they haven't merged in some of the recent improvements that Prusa Slicer made. Um, but it adds in a bunch of useful features that Prusa Slicer does not have. So I would say if you if you are, if you do a lot of printing, it's worth it. You can uh, you can migrate a lot of your profiles. Like you can just you can take your many of your profiles from Prusa Slicer and move them into Super Slicer, so you don't have to start over. But, um, yeah, I you can give it a shot. Like it's basically Super Slicer but more complicated. So if you if you mess around with the low level a lot, I would uh, I think it's I think it's worth it. It's, yeah, it's generally, the way of saying it, um, weird, sort of like nitty gritty things, like the distance between the brim and the first, like elephant foot compensation on the brim, stuff like that, very nitty gritty details tend to materialize first in Super Slicer and then get pulled back into Prusa Slicer. Uh, the Prusa Slicer improvements tend to be more on the front end because they're, you know, they're, they're make they're making this more like consumer friendly and accessible where super slicer is making it more full featured i recommend it i like it a lot i i'm glad uh, i'm glad renee clued me in on it because um it's definitely the right slicer to use for a, a complicated printer like this okay so let's uh, let's log into this thing get that get that print resumed because it looks like everything is dry looks like everything's set go printer go Come on, it says connecting. Should be online. I'm gonna, I'm gonna reload here. I think it's just an issue with the front end. Come on. There we go. Nice. This printer has been freaking bulletproof. I've been, I've been super excited. I've been, I've, I've been super imp impressed and surprised. I've been suppressed. Uh, let's see, Chronom says, uh, Zach, have you seen Maker's Muse video about printing on Garolite? I want some. Yeah, oh yeah, um, that's something I looked into, uh, when I, f so Gar Garolite is a, I don't know exactly what it is, it's some sort of slate-like m synthetic material, but it's a good thermal insulator, and, uh, it's often used for printing high-temperature polymers, like, you know, like the, this the peak and peck and high-temperature PET and stuff, because it's a, it's a great, it's a great thermal performer. It's sort of like, like, it almost behaves like PEI for high-temperature materials. It seems interesting, um, I, the only printer that I own that you can, that I can buy an off-the-shelf Garolite plate for is the Prusa, and that's the only one I'm not going to do high-temperature printing on. And compared to a PI-coated steel plate, it's got a lot of downsides. It's stiff, so you can't just crack the part off. It, um, it's a thermal insulator, so it takes longer. It's like glass. It's, it's worse than glass. It takes longer to heat up. Um, yeah. So it looks like, uh, now that we're, well, hang on a second. So I've, I've made a minor mistake here. Now that we are a partner people are going to want to use their new emotes and i think my symbol yeah here we go my auto moderator symbol spam detector is picking up emotes which it shouldn't pardon me so uh let's deal with that console dashboard what's this what's this one called uh mod tools there we go caps protect symbol protection disengage all righty i'm also going to turn on link protection uh, wait, no, we're, wait, it's off. Yep, we want to keep it off. Okay, so you should now be able to spam emotes. Uh, yeah. Looks like another person asked about the, uh, about the Garolite. I mean, I've considered it. I just, it doesn't solve anything that we, it doesn't solve a problem that we're having. Um, yeah, the only time I, I use stuff that I don't, I don't, the only time I get stuff that I don't have a need for is typically when it's, like, sponsored. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I typically buy stuff as I need it, and I, ha I just haven't had a need for, for that yet. I think I'm characterizing that right. Um, let's see. Oh, wait, no, I, I, think, I'm I think I'm mixing I'm mixing some stuff up. Uh, Gearlite is, oh, it's fiberglass. Okay, I'm missing, I'm, uh, all right, I'm mixing, th I'm mixing things up. I, I was, conf I was conflating to, uh, I was conflating to, what was I thinking about? Um, I forget. 
Uh, anyways, uh, it's just it's just FR4 without the copper cladding. Uh, printing straight on fiberglass. Ah, oh, I think I, 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 let me let me let me let me look into this for a sec because uh, I think I, I thought I was being I thought my 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 thoughts about that were uh, were, were right. Now, let's see, printing on Gearlite. Surprised how many people watch. Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is uh, I was I was I was right here. Oh, I I didn't know it was uh, I didn't know it was far. Oh, it's Phenolic. Oh, okay. Gotcha. All right. It's uh, it's 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 it's. So let's see. Uh, I'm on Matter Hackers. I should have asked them for. I should have asked them to, set, to include one of these. This is probably where I saw it. Uh, yes, this is the surface you use for high temperature nylon materials, as well as uh, high, as well as like a lot of high temperature plastics, because it's made of. Except they're saying this isn't made of fiberglass. Uh, they're saying this is made of phenolic, uh, which is it's also commonly used for. Let's see. It's it's. It's made of phenolic, uh, which is also a, a fairly common PCB material, but um, it's it's not fiberglass. It's made of basically sheets of paper that have been saturated with a resin solution and then uh, stacked up into a board. I actually have some. Uh, let's see, I've got uh, where did I put them? No, 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 not this one. I think. Uh, let's see. I don't think this is one. Bear with me one sec. Uh, see, I've only got I've only got scraps here, but um, yeah, the perf board that I often use on my projects is uh, this is not fiberglass. This is using a phenolic uh, a phenolic board that um, is similar to I guess uh, this Gerolite material. The reason why I use the phenolic, it, by the way, is because it's um, fiberglass is extremely tough, but this stuff is literally just stiffened cardboard, so you can break it really easily, and uh, it doesn't re it doesn't release splinters of crud into the air. Oh, what's going on here? Why is uh, uh looks like we had a little little jamming action going on. Yeah, something's uh, something something's funny here. Yeah, looks like uh, looks like we're 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 all jammed up. That sucks. So um, let's go here. Let's switch over so you can actually see what I'm doing. Yeah, uh, the layer's not going down evenly. We're uh, we got we got a jam. It must have been caused by the. Um, must be caused by the foam that got stuck in there. So I'm gonna drop the bed, grab our paper towel, give it a more, give it a more thorough wipe down. Hopefully it didn't damage. Uh, hopefully it damage it. That would suck if it had like an acid or something. This nozzle should resist more or less anything, because uh, it's got this. It's got a it's got a coating on it that um, protects against stuff, and I don't think I I don't think I can scrape it off. I um like you you definitely can scrape it off with a brass brush, but I used very light pressure and only a couple strokes. the The purpose of that is the purpose of the uh, the brass brush is not to clean the nozzle. It's so much as to get like bits of paper towel off it, because. You know, the paper towel gets rid of the plastic, but sometimes it leaves bits of paper towel behind. All right. Well, I don't think this is worth finishing. Yeah. I don't think this is worth finishing because it's just too... Yeah. It's too uneven. Well, that sucks. But that's all right. We can just do it again. It's only 3D printed. Someone asked earlier what, what I do with my... What, what do I do with my failed prints? Um, the ones that are made of uh, PET, I will recycle, and uh, the rest get thrown out. I try not to, yeah, the rest get thrown out. I, I try not to do prototyping in materials other than PLA or PETG. So uh, typically, if I'm printing something in a different material that isn't that won't biodegrade and isn't recyclable. Uh, I try to make sure that I'm not going to have to reprint it. That's going to be the, uh, the the final version. 
So yeah, unfortunately, we're gonna have to stop this and start over. Ho hopefully, when it hopefully it works again. Hopefully, it works the second time. But yeah, let's cancel the print. Bogus. Let's make sure it doesn't fall off. <laughs> uh, all right. I'm just going to pick up the tool. Can can you see what's going on here? Yeah, there we go. Excellent. I'm going to pick up the tool and we're just going to run some filament through so I can make sure that it's not jammed anymore. We have to return to the dashboard. Let's run a hundred millimeters through. Let's see. On filament, you can do it. It's, nothing's coming out. Yeah, I think well, it's not turning. What's going on here? Oh, it's cooling down to 270. I see. Because it was 285 before. All right, so now it's turning. Filament's coming out. I'm not seeing any spurting. Not seeing any unevenness. Yeah, seems to be coming out nice and easy. I'm extruding this at five millimeters a second, which is pretty aggressive. If there's a jam, it'll usually They'll usually show up, but this this looks fine. Okay, so I'm guessing. Um, hopefully that was just like a little fleck of crap blocking the nozzle, and we should be back to be back to normal. At least it didn't drop the nozzle again. <sighs> Anyways, yeah, maybe I should take a look at, at this at this Gerolite material. Yeah, I tend not. I just don't buy stuff that I, I until I have a need for it. Uh, Hambone Fake Namington says, "Why are you wearing the glass thing?" Uh, well, we fixed uh, we fixed the broken part last uh, last episode, so I was going to wear it and show Twitch chat, but uh, it's let's see. I think I should. Yeah, it's it didn't charge overnight, so currently nothing. But that said, I uh, now has enough charge to turn on. So let me see if I can get Twitch chat working on this. Let's see. I wish. There is a way for me to show you what, uh, what I'm seeing, but I have to do it over Android Debug Bridge, which I don't believe I actually have installed on uh, on this on this PC. So you're gonna have to you're gonna have to pretend. So let's see. No, nope, that's not what I want. I did something to this to cause it to hide the labels for all the apps. So now I, I don't know which one is. Which one is the Twitch? This is running this ancient version of Android, and I've I've hacked it, modded it, and tweaked it so much I have no clue uh, what's going. Oh, oh, hey, there we go. All right, now we got Twitch chat going on. Jeff Hardy says, "I swear I'll find a project to use all the random crap I bought someday." It's working. So now I can keep an eye on. Uh, stream chat from my heads up display. Isn't that just the neatest? Uh, Behaving Beaver has posted some raptors. Oh, very cool. So yeah, now I can keep an eye on stream chat when I'm away. Yep, you can send messages directly to my face stills. Yep, I'm gonna turn this off for now though. Okay, so let's let's see if this actually. I'm gonna keep a closer eye on this. And I can use my heads up display to keep an eye on chat. So let's see. First, let, yep, all right. Brim looks like it's going down well. Or skirt, I should say. This is looking good. I'm hearing a, I heard a little bit of a click sound, which is, which is unnerving. We don't want to hear a click sound. But I don't know if that might be the filament moving through the, uh, the feed, the feed tube. So let's see. Looks all right. It's a little, it's, lo, it's uh, zeroed a little high though. So I'm gonna bring the nozzle a little closer to the plate. I think this is good. Yeah, it's looking fine for now. The, uh, the brim is, because, the, because there are these parallel lines printing right up, uh, right up against each other, the brim is a good way to see potential problems with the first layer before you get too deep into the print, which is why I will often enable it even for things that don't strictly need it. Zhiva says, this is what they meant when they said wearables boost productivity. Yep, screw that. 
I gotta figure out some permanent solution for um, for wearing cameras because it would be nice to have something like like a wearable camera like pointing at my face or like a chest cam or something so that as I move around the shop uh, you can continue to you can continue to uh, I don't know like get FaceTime I suppose uh yeah so let's let that thing chooch let's turn our attention back over to the overhead cam and uh, let's glue some of these let's let's trim some of these parts up and glue them together yeah i guess it would make it would be it would make more sense to to get working on the sec on the next uh the next part but so that we could print it while we trim stuff up but i don't care i want to i want to have something to show you Right, let's get this thing to stop autofocusing because this is getting this is gonna get out of control. Let's see, camera control, stop autofocusing. Done. Yay. I don't know why it looks so green. That's weird. Let's see. Jeff Hardy says stick a Raspberry Pi cam right in the center of the glasses. The problem isn't the camera. The problem is actually getting the data in like the problem is actually getting the data to the computer. I've tried a bunch of different video systems, like all you know, all using Raspberry Pi, and they just end up being full of artifacts, and they just look like garbage. They end up being full of artifacts. The frame rate sucks. They're they're just not like my stream requirements aren't crazy, right? I only stream it for for a number of reasons. I only stream at 1080p, 30fps, but I just haven't found any camera, I haven't found any wireless cameras that can keep up with that. And they should. My my network is more than my 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 my, my yeah my network is more than like my LAN especially is is you can handle tons. I I think I I think I benchmarked it like you can handle like like two gigabytes per second of uh, of LAN traffic from a uh, I think yeah I think you can handle two gigs. So I'm not worried about that. But uh, it just, I think it's the, I think it might be the number of packets it's sending. They, uh, they get, maybe they're getting throttled or something. I don't know. The, the Raspberry Pi is designed for decoding video, not, uh, like the Raspberry Pi is better at decoding video than it is at, uh, at encoding video. So uh, it's not necessarily the best, the best choice. But I honestly don't know. And also, I don't think it has a very strong network card. So yeah, this thing here is our OLED button. Here, check this out. Uh, CXOB23 says you need something to spend channel points on. I didn't know I just see. I didn't know I enabled those. I, I is that is that the is that the Streamlabs feature where you can like spend points to like do special chats? Because I disabled that. I wanted everyone to. I wanted everyone to have access to everything at the beginning. Or is that a Twitch feature? Getting into Twitch at this stage is like um, it's like getting into a, it's like getting into Team Fortress too, right? Like it's been around for so long, they've introduced so many features. The meta has become so advanced and technical. Uh, let's see. Oh, okay, so this is a Twitch feature. This isn't a Streamlabs feature. Okay, well then I have to I have to read up on it. I have to learn. I use the system. I thought I had read. I thought I had read up on all the features, but clearly that's not the case. I've I've wanted to do the the raid feature, but no one I know has ever been running a stream. After, yeah, pe very few of the other people I I know who build stuff on stream have been streaming lately. So there's nowhere to send you folks to. I. I uh. <laughs> Let's see, that should work. I, I know I'm also I know I'm behind on my my stream replays. I've been uh, I've fallen behind on getting those up on YouTube because I've been throwing everything I got into this next episode. The next episode. Oh man. I really hope that like I don't end the stream and check my mailbox and like the the PEI filament and all the boards are there, I would be I would be beyond salty. But yeah, so this thing here is, uh, we're building a low profile mechanical keyboard. And uh, this is actually one part of a multi-part project. It's gonna end up being a cyber deck, but the next thing we're gonna work on after, after this keyboard is done is a Raspberry Pi and touchscreen module that you can either use as, I think I'm gonna set this, I think, I don't actually know what we're gonna do with that. Like, cause I don't like making like, 
when you make something for developers, like you say, like, just saying, like, oh yeah, this is like a touchscreen thing for developers. That's such a bunt. Like, it's such a, like, if you're saying, like, this is a thing for you to make things with, that just means that you have no idea why people would want to use it. Uh, so I need to figure out a tier one purpose for it. I think I might make the Raspberry Pi part of it, like, designed to be attached to your printer to use, like, Octoprint or something, or even the clip. Yeah, make some, so, like, anyways, uh, the next part is this Raspberry Pi with a touchscreen that uh, he'll be able to use for something. And uh, the final part is a frame that uh, adds batteries and a few more controls and expansion ports. And combined, those create a cyber deck. But uh, each one on its own is a project. And the reason I did that is because I wanted to put more engineering into this project than I could do for a single video, right? Like, to do a, doing a project, the rate at which I build projects for specifically for YouTube is about about five times faster than I used to build for for clients. Yeah, so I projects that I would or normally tell a client would take so or, or like projects that I build on YouTube in let's say a week and some change. If I were to have done that for a client, I would generally quote them five to six weeks. But uh, that type of speed and that type of speed and corner cutting doesn't really fly if I'm making a project that I intend to either like sell boards for, or at the very least, heavily encourage other people to make. So um, yeah. But that said, I don't think work in progress videos are very fun. I know that, like it's Hacksmith's bread and butter, but I think Hacksmith is the anomaly, and their work in progress videos, like yeah, their work in progress videos get two million views, but. You compare that to the regular videos about the finished project, get like 20. Like, yeah, I don't think, and again, like the numbers are just a proxy for, you know, the, the numbers are just a proxy for, um, for people being interested, right? Like, you don't do it for the numbers, you do it for the people watching. The numbers just tell you, you know, who's watching. Basically, I don't think work in progress videos are fun. So instead of doing work in progress videos, I'm going to try to split this project into standalone projects so that we are both making new videos about new projects, right? With all the fun of making a new project and at the same time advancing towards a larger, uh, a larger goal. So it's a new way of doing stuff. And I, it also feeds, it also kind of feeds back into like how I, recommend building projects where you try to break it down to individual pieces and finish each piece. So that way if something goes wrong, you can just stop early and instead of having no project, you have a smaller project. So it ties into that. And if all goes according to plan, then we'll follow it up with a final episode after the Cyberdeck is done about how to bring a project to market for hobbyists. So cover we cover one or both sides of that, like either you have, so you've made a project and you want to share it. How do you do that? Or, uh, alternately, you, um, you want to make a project intended for hobbyists. Yeah. So let's see, let's keep these, uh, purple ones for now. Hopefully we can just peel off enough of these. You'll notice that I printed the letters upside down and that was done on purpose. That's because if I print them upside down. Even if there's a bit of elephant's foot, we should still be able to fit them in place. They should still be able to go into their little recesses. Yeah. So, yep, yeah, very nice. We don't have to, yeah, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to like bring in the knife and trim off every little piece of plastic with these because it's just not necessary, especially for a prototype. But, uh, yeah, this X should probably be a different color for contrast, but, you know, work with... We'll work with what we got. So let's be very, let's be very careful here. Let's see. I want to slice this off. This is not the appropriate knife for the job. There we go. I have a little, a little scalpel. There we are. Oh, come on. Oh, hey, hey. See, we got Mr. Oh, that didn't work. <laughs> Mr. Polnareff, Polnareff, has subscribed. 
Thank you very much. I am surprised you made it out of the first out of your first season's appearance. Are they ever gonna make another are they ever gonna make another JoJo like anime? Or is it or is it manga only now? Like, oh man, that is got that's gotta be the only anime that was super friggin' hyped, and then I finally saw it, and the hype still sold it short. If you've never watched JoJo, it's You've got to, you, you have to, except for the first season, like, it's, it's not just entertaining, although it is very entertaining. It's also really clever and well-written. The characters are, like, it's just a funny juxtaposition for, like, how well-written the characters are compared to how freaking stupid the premise of the show is. And let me tell you that every time you think the show has become as stupid as it's going to get, it will surprise you again. It's the smartest, it's got to be, like, the smartest, dumbest anime that I've ever seen. And holy crap, it is so stylish, and the fights are hysterical. And each season is so different. Like, if you don't like a if you're watching JoJo and you don't like a season, just move on to the next one. They're completely different, and they, they only loosely tie into each other. The different seasons aren't, um, the different seasons aren't, um, it's not, like, each season stands alone. It's, it's, uh, there, there is an overarching story, but it kind of starts anew in each setting. And some are some are actually their own their own ball of wax. Like you got the Morio, like the Morio arc, which in my opinion was pro probably the best. Is has nothing to do with any of the other uh, any of the others. Like it has some recurring characters, but it's a completely different plot. And it's the mission is freaking hysterical, and everyone is like super flamboyant, and it's great. Ah, what a show! Yeah, you gotta watch. If you've never watched JoJo, I'm being completely serious here. It's so much better than the memes and hype make it sound. And the memes and hype make it sound quite good. Any any other everyone in chat, what's um what's what's your favorite stand? Which uh, which which Yeah, what's which which one's your favorite? Because I, I definitely I, I definitely have my favorites. Uh but I'm curious to hear yours. Let's just gently trim this off trim this off. Uh, Nesta Dream says, uh, gotta find a legal way to watch parts four and five. I thought it was on Netflix. I think I watched everything on either Netflix or Crunchyroll. I think. Maybe that wasn't, maybe it wasn't part five. Oh man, there's so many good stands. Zawaruda. I think that was, that was actually kind of boring. Also, Dio does not show up as nearly as often as the memes make it sound. Uh, all right. Oh, we also have the next PCB logo, of course. There we are. Let's see. Get this, uh, get this trimmed off. So what do do? Let's see. Who's, uh, uh let's see. <laughs> CXOB prefers the first few seasons before they introduce stan stands. I don't like the first season. I, the first season was, the first season, the, it was the show is still clearly kind of getting into its, getting into its swing. Like it was still, it was still trying to figure, it was still like finding its sea legs. So the first season is my least favorite. But that said, it's still it's still very good. Uh, yeah, the the whole stands. If you're if you're wondering what the hell we're talking about, like. The stands are like uh, are like your your summon in the in the show, but they aren't actually introduced until I think the third season. Even though they're one of the most well known parts of the show, uh, they I don't think they're actually introduced until a number of seasons in. Before it's, it uses like the first season has this sort of chi type magic thing. The first season's ridiculous. It's extremely dark and extremely ridiculous. One thing the first season excels of JoJo excels at is it is simultaneously one of the goofiest and darkest shows I've ever seen. It's both goofy and dark, and extremely dark and extremely stupid. I, I really like it. Um, yeah, my favorite. St oh man, there are a few of them. There. Oh man, there there are, there are a few I like. Oh man. Uh, one of them though, like uh, oh man, yeah, every time I every time I want to say one, like another one comes to 
comes to mind. They're so friggin' hysterical. Ah, oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. Uh, I like like I like Sex Pistols. Sex Pistols is hysterical. The the Emperor is the Emperor is also is also good, but that's not so much the stand as the user. Yeah, not so. Some some most stands are like a dude or a lady. Like they're a, they're a person that I don't know why they call them stands. But like, uh, yeah, most of them are, uh, are like a person that you can that can like fight for you. But some of them are things like guns or or bullets or a suit of armor or, or uh, a radio tower. They're it's quite it's quite a show. Why is my dog borking? Why is he borking so much? Quit, quit borking, puppy. Oh, let's see. What glue do we want to use here? I think I want to use. There we go. All right, we're gonna use some uh, some thin zapagap to glue this together because it cures quickly and it works really well with a very fine applicator. Pupper is giving his opinion on stands. Uh, oh, there was a dog with a stand. Uh, there were two. If I'm remembering this right, there were two animals that had like stands are usually a human exclusive thing, but I think there were a bunch of rats and a dog. The dog was awesome. His stand was stupid, but the dog was cool. Um, yeah. Dog was, the dog was cool. Who would win in a fight? I forgot, what was the name of this stupid dog? Yeah, uh, who would win a fight? That dog or, or Ayn from, uh, uh, from Cowboy Bebop? Ayn does literally nothing, and I, I kind of like that. They added this, they call him a data dog, and there's this whole episode about rescuing him, and I think there's another episode about keeping him safe, but they never explain what that means. He just seems to be a corgi. Oh, right, there was a bird. That's right. There was a bird, bird against dog battle. So, oh, Iggy, yeah. Yep. Iggy was the dog. He had a... His stand was also a dog, I think. Yeah. What a show. Yes, Pet, pet Shop Plus was the rats. And there was a bird as well. Let's see, there's a stand that could rewind time. There are there are weird there are weird there are weird ones, weird stands. Uh, gold golden experience is, is a cool one, because if not for like yeah, that was the main character's stand, and I want to say season four, I believe. And what's cool about that stand is uh, is it belongs first off belongs to the main character, but it's it's a healing stand. So basically, when it inflicts harm on something, it actually repairs it. So if it punches something, it will actually fix it. And I thought that was neat, because I've never seen a show with a main character that was the cleric of the party. Usually the, usually the main character is the, is the DPS, or the tank, and you have, like, generally a... Uh, female love interest that acts as the that acts as the healer but no in this one the main character is uh has not is not just he's not just the cleric but he has one of the strongest healing abilities of any show and they use it in some really interesting ways yeah man that now that i think about it that the whole party from from golden wind was uh just a really weird composition Compared to like compared to other shows, so let's see. Like the, the leaders of it, you have the leaders are the healer and the utility guy. Because uh, the other sort of main character in that show, his stand uh, basically can open up wall. It sort of can open up windows on flat surfaces. So you've got kind of, so the main characters are kind of like the support and the other support. It doesn't yeah, it doesn't really you know the party doesn't really have a damage dealer. It doesn't really have a heavy hitter. It's, it's sort of like they're they're all technical, which makes a really neat dynamic. Yep, I dropped the scalpel. Everything's fine. Let's see. Come on, just gotta cut this uh, cut this apart. Yeah, I thought that was a that was a cool show. That, that season in, in particular, that had some really creative stands. 
Yeah, there was one with a suit of armor, one was a turtle. A turtle with a a turtle with a with a luxury apartment in it. Yeah, it's a weird show. Also, everyone dresses like a like a maniac. It's yeah, we're talking like fifth element level of costume design here. Like like S S tier S tier character creation. And it's not like uh, it's not like Yu-Gi-Oh style where like the like the main character looks ridiculously silly and everyone else is just meh. No, everyone is flamboyant and, b and bizarre. Everyone. Let's see. Oh, right. yeah, man. There are some cool stands. There's one that's a manga that shows there's a manga that shows the future, right? But it it does it in a really interesting way. It's Basically, when you use it, it, it's strongly implied here. When you when when it's activated, it shows you what the future will look like. It doesn't show you what the future is going to be. It just shows you a um. It it uh, it doesn't show you what the future is going to be. It just shows frames of what the future is going to look like. So if you met if you try to interfere with uh if you try to interfere with the future and you mess it up you'll end up in a situation that could be you know, the situation could backfire or turn out completely opposite to what you think but it'll look identical and uh i thought that was one of the funniest and most interesting ways to do a uh, future prediction stand anyways enough about jojo i've killed enough time let's uh let's start gluing also, that, that, that one particular stand and its owners is the only one with its own theme song, the one that sees the future. Yeah. And they had to censor all the names of the characters and the stands and stuff, because like they're all named after they're all named after like like rock band like like rock bands and rock artists and and and, and songs and it's, they all have rock inspired names and like clearly Clearly, the local localization team was worried about like being sued, so they renamed all of them. Like Sex Pistols became Six Bullets. Uh, let's see, Oingo and Boingo became Mondata and Zenyatta, which itself was pretty funny. I, I actually think that that's that's the of all the 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 stupid English names, that's that one's particularly weird because it's the only time. I believe it's the only one where they replace one. Ro they replace one rock name with another one. It like for some reason, like Mundata Zenyata is the name of a. I don't, it's a song by I forget who it was, but um, yeah. So they replaced Oingo Boingo with Mundata Zenyata. But it's also the only one where the new name is cooler than the last one. Yeah. Oh right, the second season was the Pillar Man. That was also that one was very weird. That had one of the strangest training arcs of any show I've ever seen outside of Hunter Hunter. Oh man, what a great what a great series. So let's glue this thing up. So I yeah, so these plates, these old plates here are gonna hold the are gonna hold the letters. And uh, they should have enough relief that we can get them in. Uh, actually, it looks like we're going to have a bit of trouble. What's, what's going on here? I'm sure I left enough, I'm sure, I left like half a mil, half a millimeter of clearance. What the hell is going on here? Might have to, might have to glue it up a little bit. Let's see. Oh, uh, there's, oh, uh, we got strings. Str it's stringy because this, this PTG is both old and, Ah, jeez, why the why'd so much glue come out? Both old and crappy. Why'd so much glue come out? There we go. We only need a little bit of glue. Drop, 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 drop. More than enough. So let's see. Let's get the V in there. Come on, V. Oh, we're gonna have some trouble here, aren't we? Where are my clamps? It's time to give it the clamps. Damn it. I dropped the clamps. All right, let's try to clamp this. 
this down. See if it the clamps. Futurama is such a good that was a good show too. It wasn't it wasn't anime though. It doesn't count. Ugh. Oh hey, we got a sub. Thanks a lot to Mr. Schmeeth. Clamps should 100 percent be a channel emote. I might. Now I think we can I think we can do that. I think. Oh, this clamp fell apart. I think it didn't have the, I think the screw on top came off. That's bizarre. Maybe it didn't even have one. That's what I get for buying a cheapo Harbor Freight clamp. Given the clamps. What do you think? Should, should, the, should the emote be like just a picture of a clamp or should it be the robot from Futurama with the clamps? The one that I believe was actually named Clamps. But that was like its name. His name was like Clamphouse or something. Something, whatever. What I'm, what I'm trying to say here is that Futurama is funny. Hot take. Hot take of the day. Uh, yeah, alright, this is going to be a little harder than I... Uh, could be a little harder than I expected. The stuff, luckily, the stuff dries in a, in like milliseconds, so we're not going to be waiting that long. All right, let's pop out the letters from the other side and build that one up. I printed these in two shots, and some of them didn't come out that great. Uh, do the, Z Keepa says they have Menards in Colorado. That's an excellent question. I'm not sure. Brooke, do they have uh, do they have Menards here? I don't I don't think I don't think so. That's the supermarket, right? Because over here it's all King Supers and Safeway and Kroger, who I believe are all the same. I believe they're they're actually they're all they're all the they're all owned by the same the same Kroger company. King Supers is such a weird name for a grocery store. Oh my god. <laughs> All right, let's be more careful with the glue this time. Let's see if this side glues together any any easier. I doubt it. It's probably actually going to be worse. What happened here? Oh, this is the wrong size. Ah, this one is the wrong size. I must have printed uh must have printed a previous revision. Because I, I, I made this part a bit smaller, so I, I think I printed a different revision of this. Well, poop! Uh, Zekeepa says, it's like Micro Center, but with the other kind of hardware. Oh, then, then definitely not. I feel like I'd know about it. If that were the case, if that were the case, I, 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 think, I, would, I think I would know about it. So let's see. This should stick here. So let's... Get that done. Drop. Yeah, probably shouldn't have used this garbage, this garbage PETG. It's yeah, I shouldn't use this crappy PETG. This is the the glittering glow in the dark stuff. I had a tiny bit left. I wanted to use it, but. It was, it's not, it's not high quality material, and uh, now we're paying the price. Let's see. This should be set by now. This, this glue only takes a few seconds to, to set up. So yeah, that, that looks all right. Void star, now let's, let's glue down the lab. There we go. Come into my lab. See what's on the slab. See you shiver with anticipation. That's something I want to do after friggin' if if, if COVID ever goes away, go see uh, go see Rocky. Kubushia uh, says, Kubushia says, how did you come up with the name Void Star Lab? Well, it's not Void Star Labs. There's only one of them. It's only it's only one Void Star Lab. Um, 
How did I come up with it? I'm actually really bad at coming up, really bad at coming up with brand names, as everyone who knows the names of any of my projects can um, attest. I'm actually really bad at coming up with names. Uh, how are we doing over here? This looks all right. Not the nicest, but it looks all right. Uh, yeah, I needed I needed a name because I was uh, incorporating, not incorporating, but filing for my LLC. I needed a name and. Uh, where, where did Void Star originally? I think it might have been like a fake, like a fake brand name or something. I came up with for a video game idea or something. Basically, the idea behind the name Void, like a Void Star, is a construct in C, in uh, C programming languages. That uh, so, like the star indicates a pointer. Basically, it says that this this data type, it says that this variable is not, uh, it's not holding data. Instead, it's just holding a memory address that has data in it. So if you have like, for instance, a car star, right? Then you have a pointer to a character. This often is like an array because, uh, you know, an array type is just a pointer to the, uh, the first element in, uh, the first element in the array. So yeah, you have to, so you have a type and a pointer. A void star is just a memory address with no data type attached to it. So let's, uh, let's make sure this, this fits in properly. I think it's supposed to go in like this. Yes. Good. Is this right? I think this goes, yeah, like so. Perfect. So check this out. Yeah, this is the, uh, this is the button. This is the OLED button. I think, uh, yeah, I think the purple's the, purple's the way to go here. So let's stick these, uh, Stick these. Do I want to stick these on, or, or I should actually put some sort of film or something over this? Eh, for a prototype, we don't we don't need to go that far. All right. So void star. Um, yeah. So void star is a memory address that doesn't have a type of data attached to it, and uh, this is kind of philosophically interesting. I should probably solder the header in before I permanently mash this into place, shouldn't I? So philosophically, I know that sounds kind of weird in a computer science context, it's a really interesting concept because on one hand, a void star is nothing, right? It's a, it, it, it doesn't specify a type. So it's just a memory address, so it's a pointer to something that doesn't signify any data. And I mean that in the strictest sense, like if you're pointing to another pointer, you just make it a star star. So it would be like a car star star. But nope, a void star points to nothing. On the other hand, a void star could be anything because you can cast it into whatever you want without with only you know without throwing a compile error. It'll throw a warning, but not an error. So you can cast it into whatever you want. And also, if you want to if you want to um, if you want to uh, hold a reference to a function, right? Like if you basically if you want to like be able to dynamically like assign a function at runtime or something. Uh, you just use a void star because a, f a function doesn't have a data type because it's not data. It's a function. So you use a void star to, uh, to pass a function as a parameter or as a variable. So on one hand, it's useless and means nothing. On the other hand, it could be literally anything and it's the only data type that can do stuff because you can call a void star as if it were a function because it doesn't have a type the compiler doesn't know whether you can call it or not so it'll cause uh i believe it'll cause yeah it can cause compile time errors but or it cause runtime i don't actually know i'm not that i haven't gone that deep into into uh to see anyways uh for electronics consulting comp for like a prototype development consulting company i thought it was a great name because we can do anything like void star lab is like is like the void, like it's the function you call when you want to do anything. Uh, on the other hand, it's, I like that it doesn't specify a type because I don't really like, that's the way of saying it. I, I don't, um, like when people ask me what I do, I don't have like, one, like I don't have one thing to tell them because, you know, like building prototypes is multidisciplinary. So like, I can't say like, yeah, I, I'm a, I'm a program or yeah, I, 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 I do, I'm an electrical engineer. No, it's, it's a void star. It, it, 
It doesn't have a type. It's just, just whatever it's been assigned to. Yeah, I thought that was interesting. Yeah, that's why it's called Void Star Lab. I can't put this... I can't fit this in. These little pegs aren't... These little pegs printed too blobby. They're not going in. I wonder if this printed any better. Yeah, you can see how much how much nicer... See how much nicer the dimensions are. Ugh. So what I get for, for cheaping out... Let's see. This Hopefully this fits. If this doesn't fit, then we have to revise the design. Now I have the... Uh, there we go. I have the Oingo Boingo theme song. Okay, so this fits pretty well. Uh, looks like this dimension here is a bit too wide. It's, we're, we're, we're colliding right there. So let's see if that is also true for the rest of the displays. Seems to be the case. Uh, where's my cap? Actually, it doesn't matter. We're going we're gonna to revise this anyways. Cool, cool, cool. So let's just trim this up. Yeah, then we'll get to designing. We'll get to revising this uh, to make the separate left and right versions. Yeah, maybe we'll work on a little bit of the code. I don't actually, I've been struggling a lot to figure out the code for this project. Uh, let's see. Oh, if I haven't been keeping an eye on chat, I should probably do this. Uh, all right, so according to Kubushia, who uh, claims to be a software engineer, my, my description of, uh, of C was, um, was, was decent. My Zulu is atrocious, by the way. What does that even mean? Like, did I say Z instead of Z? Is that the, uh, is that the implication? I'm a lousy, I'm a lousy Canadian. I'm not really a Canadian. The Canadian government thinks I'm a Canadian because my because my folks were. Canada uh, recognizes. I forget. What, I forget what it's called. Basically, if Canada, if your parents are Canadian, Canada recognizes your citizenship, but America doesn't. America. Uh, I don't believe. If I'm remembering this right, I don't think you can actually hold dual citizenship. Like America doesn't recognize any dual citizenship. You're either American or, or you ain't. But uh, Canada thinks I'm Canadian. I don't actually, I don't think I have a Canadian, I think my Canadian passport, got, it's got to be like 20 years out of date or something. Ah, let's see. Soydu says, you made a power glove and didn't name it Magic Fingers. That is true. Um, <laughs> a part of the, what should we call it? Uh, part of naming a project is uh, search engine optimization. You have to name the project something that doesn't have good search, that like, you have to you have to name a project something that you're likely to become either be or become the top search result for. You also have to name it something that can't be misspelled. Um, and what are some of the other ones? You have to name it something that doesn't have any any implications, right? Like if 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 people think it might not be PG thirteen, then they I, some people just won't talk about it and media won't cover it. So yeah, that's why I name things like chromance, right? Like um, uh, Chromance, Singularitron. The Data Blaster is a little different. Uh, yeah, I gave it a name that had bad SEO because uh, it wasn't, it was just a prototype. It wasn't the finished project. Um, yeah, okay, cool. So we got these, got these here. We'll, we'll use these and get the crap out of here. Um, all right. So we're just going to have to... Maybe this is why it didn't go in in the first place. Let's, let's double check here. So I didn't make any tweaks to this. Yeah, so this, was, this one's off as well. All right. So maybe this will go in if we, uh, if we cut this part down. I'm going to be very gentle here because... Do it against the table because this is thin and there's a high chance of the knife punching through. There we are. So let's see if this fits any better. Now I want to watch. Now I want to watch some JoJo. All right. So it looks like this lip I added here could be causing more harm than good. I added this little lip up here to protect, or to, just to, to conceal the top of the ribbon cable, but I think it's getting in the way. Yeah, I think I'll just. 
just cut the whole thing. Cut the whole friggin' thing off. <laughs> so let's set this up so that I don't cut my finger. Uh, maybe it makes more sense to to trim this, like to, to clip this off. Yeah. Do we have, uh, by the way, anyone here uh, find us through Twitch? Because we have been ending up on the first page or so of the science and technology category for a few streams now. So hopefully we get some, uh, hopefully we get some new, some fresh blood. Always good to, to meet new people, convince them to build projects. So yeah, make sure to say hi if, uh, if you're new here. I'm not, I'm not too worried about breaking the screen. I, I bought like 10 of them. All right, so that, that, fits, that fits pretty well. You'll see that there's, so let's see, you'll notice there's a gap in there. There's a gap between the display and the frame. Let's see. Uh, yeah, uh, there's a gap between the display and the frame. And um, that is so, so that you can put a little like piece of plastic or glass or something there. Uh, I don't think we're going to do that right now, but yeah, so let's, uh, so it looks like the purple worked fine once we cut that little bit off. So let's get the blue ones out of here. We have to reprint the Mirage branding, but apart from that, I think we're good. Let's see. Let's actually give this a little clip. I'll use our, I'll use our side cutters. I'll use our sprue cutters for this. Let's see. Engage safety squints. Hey, hey, Brooke has redeemed a message that says, Zach's face is a butt. That's rude. My face is not a butt, ma'am. My face is a face. Besides, if I'm a butt face, that makes you a butt face merrier. Ha ha, QED. Oh, that, oh, I, bro I, cracked, the dis I cracked the corner of the display. Yeah, we're going to have to modify this a little bit. I cracked the display. I hope it didn't damage any of the circuits. You can see right here this corner is, uh, is snapped off. That's why we bought spares. I hope I didn't, hope I didn't permanently damage anything, though. Uh, yeah, we're going to need to add more, uh, more relief. Let's see. Hopefully that just broke off. Let's, let's do this, this side first. Hopefully that just broke off uh, bef like before I fix that tab. Uh, no, I cracked another one. Yeah, we're going to have to add more, uh, more room. I keep forgetting how fragile these things are. All right, so these need a, these need a little revision as well. We have to add more. Yeah, we got to leave more, more room. I hope I, haven't, I, hope, I hope I haven't broken two of them. That would suck. These things are so fragile. Maybe I'll make a little insert to go in behind them and support them. Uh, yeah, because is, is it likely they'll break when someone's pressing them? Why is a dog borking? Dog's got no chill. Yeah, looks like it's a little too far up. No, wait, I have it backwards. Let's see. Yeah, there just isn't enough room. We gotta add some more relief. I think, yeah, I think it's some. They're gonna have to get glued in. All right. Well, crap. Um, <laughs> well, look, it happens. These these aren't expensive displays. This is why we buy a bunch of extra stuff. Yep, that's the dog. He's, he's being a spoiled brat. Let's glue the rest of these letters down and then get back to design. He's being a he's being a brat. I think he wants to go outside. He's he's ringing the he's ringing the uh, not the door the doorbells uh, the bells that we put on the door. But uh, yeah, he's just being a brat. He's you know he's a stray dog. He's only like he only lived in indoors for like a month. He's he's only just had a you know a home. So uh, he's still got to learn the rules. Plus he's like a he's like that that age. He's a dog teenager. 
the equivalent of no, he's not literally a teenager. Like a teen, like crap, a teenage dog is old as heck. Uh, he's like the dog equivalent of a teenager. Uh, hope, probably we don't actually know how how old he is. One of the the fun parts of adopting. Ah, uh, let's release this so that we can so we can get this in. Yeah, so we're going to, let's see, we can, we can modify this to add some more relief, but I honestly think it would be easier to just, uh, I was going to, I'm going to say like, we can add more relief to make it easier to get the letters in, but I honestly, I think the problem is the purple plastic. I think that's, uh, I think it's, I think it's the purple plastic, not the, not, not the, not the letters that are the issue. There's a limited, you know, there's a finite number of things that you can plan around. So, like, yes, you could say, well, okay, Zach, but, you know, the people who people who will actually end up building this thing might also be using crappy plastic, so you should design it so they can print it. And there are just a finite number of things to design around. And at some, you know, past some point, you start making something... Some, past some point, you're going to have to make something accessible for one person by making it inaccessible to a different person. And I think uh, I think trying to get around people with, with poorly tuned or imprecise printers or low qual using low-quality filament, I think that's kind of a step too far. It affects the design too much. You end up with a design that, like, sure, more people can print it, but for most people who print it, it looks nasty. I think that's what would happen here especially yeah but uh yeah check that out isn't that cool uh soydu says you can't design around all the ways bad filament can fail uh, yeah they're they're you have to decide what you design around and what you don't but um yeah i don't know why i made this so so big that's re that's really weird I don't know how this turned out to, to be so large. Or is it just that letter? That's really weird. Because this one seems to fit all right. That's very strange. Let's see. This might just be a uh, might just be problem on my end. Ah, uh, it's really weird. That letter seemed to fit fine. Maybe it's just the E that was the problem. Q, uh, Q Markiplier memes. Let's see. The real, uh, Random Guy 3 says, Real question is, why is super glue so good at gluing your fingers together, mediocre at holding anything else together? First off, if you're using super glue brand, if your super glue is bad at holding things together, get Zappa Gap. You're using the wrong super glue, first off. The second reason why super glue is so effective at sticking your fingers together is because it cures when exposed to water. It, uh, yeah, it is a chemical glue that, uh, it's not, it's not, a, basically like the way some, yeah, I think these letters were supposed to, these letters should work. Some glues use solvent, basically like, they have the adhesive and uh, the adhesive is dissolved in a solvent and as the solvent evaporates, it leaves the adhesive behind, which cures and solidifies. But some of them use a chemical reaction, and uh, cyanoacrylate glue is one of those. And the reaction uh, involves water. It's, uh, it's basically reacting with atmospheric moisture to harden. And that is why it loves to stick to your fingers, because your fingers are, uh, your fingers are covered in water. Your fingers, all, your fingers have a lot of water in them and on them. And, um, yeah, the other, the other reason why it likes to stick to your fingers is because of the surface area. Uh, your fingers have a high surface area, so it can, so capillary action can wick it up. Yeah. That's why, uh, CA glue doesn't always work for 3D prints, because the surface area is so high that it can sometimes get, or the capillary action can sometimes draw the, the, the glue in between the layers. So yeah, that's that's why super glue loves your fingers. Uh, it's also the 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 second reason is also why you should never. All right, so, so it doesn't super glue actually reacts with a bunch of different stuff, not just water. One of the important ones is cellulose. Uh, reacts with uh, reacts with cellulose and cures extremely quickly. 
And that is why it's actually dangerous to use super glue on fabrics and on paper. Because it can react so quickly, it can actually catch fire. But uh, yeah, that's why, uh, that's why super glue always seems to stick to your finger instead of your project. Yeah. Uh, if you ever, if you've ever used, oh, this is from a, this is this, this is a different sized E from a, a different printing. Okay, that that explains it. Explains why it's so big, because this is from the previous the previous revision, which had a bigger top plate and bigger letters. This should be all right. Let's get a drop a drop on here. So yeah, the Mirage text looks better. It's the Void Star Lab that was a problem. So the 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 filament, I think it was the filament, it just didn't handle the complex, the complex geometry of the Void Star Lab logo. It, it's, it's very complex, I'm not, I'm not sure you'd understand it. Let's get the, let's get the rage in here. Let's bring the rage. There we go. So yeah, um, there's a product called uh, Zip Kicker, or... Or, or the generic term is uh, CA glue accelerant, and uh, the way that and that is, uh, I think it's like basically a, a made of mostly mineral spirits, and it reacts with the glue uh, to set it far faster than it would using atmospheric oxygen or atmospheric uh, water vapor. So um, yeah, that allows you to that allows you to uh, glue stuff that otherwise wouldn't work well because there isn't enough water or enough surface area to do it right. Yeah, so there you go. That's why I love sticking your fingers. It's also why wearing gloves is very effective when working with super glue because it doesn't react with the gloves nearly as well as it does with your fingers. If you do get super glue, on, if you do get your fingers stuck together, um, yeah, if you do get your fingers stuck together, first thing to do is to try, uh, try putting 100% acetone on it. If you don't have 100% acetone, get your, get yourself over to any place that sells makeup, like an Ulta or a Sephora or something. They will have 100% acetone, and that dissolves most CA glues. Some of them are, some of them are specifically designed not to like. Some are specifically designed. Uh, oh, that is wasn't the that was the problem. It's not it's not an E. It's an M. Some of them will not uh, dissolve in acetone. In that case, you just apply consistent pressure, rub your fingers against each other. You know, like, like if your fingers are stuck together, just rub like this. And your, uh, yeah, just keep doing that. And over time, it will start to loosen and uh, eventually come off. It'll take, a, depending on how much glue you have on your fingers, it could take a while. But... It will come off safely without hurting you. Whatever you do, don't just like try to rip your fingers apart or pull whatever the thing is off you because that will take your skin with it. Instead, yeah. If, if you spilled the glue on yourself, let's see, if you spill glue on yourself and it hasn't set up yet, uh, best thing you can do is find some you could find some alcohol, like some isopropyl, and just get that on it, because that will slow down. That'll slow down uh, how fast it sets. It'll it'll make it set up slower. Give you more time to extricate yourself and your project. Yep, those are your your Void Star Lab super glue tips of the day. Woo, subtrain. Yeah, I'll admit, I just use sound effects left over from making other videos to pull the streams together. I didn't have time to find new sound effects. Ugh. Ugh, this is gonna, I'm gonna glue this to the workbench if I, if I keep going like this. Unfortunately, Zappagap will stick. Usually what you do to keep something from sticking is you put it on wax paper, but Zappagap will stick to wax paper, so it doesn't help. So, best thing to do to keep it from sticking is just to keep it moving while it sets. Super glue won't set up on anything, 
that uh, it won't set up on anything when it's moving. It just gets smeared around and spread out and cures too quickly. All right. So let's get this over here and uh, let's get ourselves all nice and caught up. Hello. A Blade of Kitten says, sat here shopping for my hull wearables project. Try to find some cheap small motors with feedback is a pain. Oh, like a little stepper or a little servo. You can find these little, little mini servos. They're cute. So it sucks that I cracked these. Uh, I feel kind, of bad, feel kind of bad about that. But uh, we'll just use these for testing. Hopefully they still work. Okay. So that's all that's all glued up. Um, there's nothing there should be nothing else to do except to glue the two halves together, and I'm not sure that's totally necessary either. Let's see. I want to remove the clamps as soon as I can, because uh, super glue can leave behind white um, this like white dust. Okay, so it looks like we had too much looks like we've glued some of the letters to the clamp. Yeah, we used a bit too much glue. Oh crap! Okay, so I can't use this one for any photo. I guess like I wasn't gonna this this one wasn't gonna be used for any photos anyways. This is more finish testing. Yeah. Well, this isn't the nicest looking. Yeah, I'm gonna add more. I'm gonna add more more relief around the letters. Remember, if your project has any sort of cosmetic flaw, it's all people will be able to see. So, well, I don't recommend getting, an, you know, don't get analysis paralysis. Don't get too caught up on making your project work perfectly, but do make it look as perfect as possible. Because most people don't, you know, most people aren't going to know enough to judge something not working right or even notice that it's not working right, but everyone can tell when something doesn't look right. So let's, uh, I think we're going to have to clamp this together. I'm remembering right, the robot on Futuramo is named Francis. Yes. AKA Clamps. Let's see. It didn't like when people called him Francis. Let's get this in here. Let's see how this works. Put that over here. Okay. Let's close up our super glue because, again, if atmospheric moisture can make its way in there, it will prematurely cure, cure the glue and ruin everything. There we go. All right. So how are we doing? Let's uh, let's go back over here. Can't see anything. So it looks like this film, it's kind of struggling with the support material, which is to be expected. PET is not, it's not the best material when it comes to making supports. So hopefully that doesn't cause too many, too many problems. I'm going to drop this down a bit. Is that, is that going to help? Is this going to, is this going to help at all? No, I think we want the opposite. That looks better. Let's see, let's see what's going on there. Right, uh, I think it looks pretty good. <laughs> Let's see. Uh, hey, Pim Destore S. I probably slaughtered that. Thanks so much for the subscription. I really appreciate it. Uh, Mr. Train Cow, you kick butt. Thank you so much. Phil Philantar, thanks for the follow. Yeah. Let's see, we we rewound VHS. Oh, we have we have someone considerate on our hands. Says, uh, "Hey Zach, what do you think of streaming on Twitch so far? I think it's great. Uh, it's so much easier to get. It's so much easier to to do a stream than uh, on YouTube than Twitch or on Twitch than YouTube. I'm gonna move. Let's scoot ourselves over here." Plus, it has a ton of features in it that give me a whole bunch more, 
peace of mind. Like big, the big problem on YouTube is that each stream has its own URL. So every stream has to be shared separately with its own different URL. And like, I can't just tell people go to twitch.tv slash Zach Friedman. I have to say, nope, you have to go to youtube.com slash uppercase E lowercase V four F Q, etc. And if anything goes wrong, that ends the stream. Anything goes wrong that ends the stream. Um, it ha like I have to start a new stream with a new URL that sends new notifications. And now I have to publish that second URL and any person who doesn't think to check for it is just like, oh, that the stream is over. Okay, that sucks. So yeah, that used to freak me out all the time. Uh, e Pun Man, thanks a lot for uh, gifting the, uh, the subscriptions. I really appreciate it. Uh, Z Keepa says you need to keep pushing people to interact with the streamer. It doesn't get promoted. Okay. Okay. F yes, that is accurate, but that's a victory because of a technicality. Uh, YouTube will promote a stream that gets heavy engagement. Twitch won't promote us, but Twitch does not promote a stream at all. So it's, it's not that YouTube, um, it's not so much that like YouTube forces you to like increase engagement. It's that Twitch doesn't help you at all twitch will help me in zero ways ever i that's why that's that's why i'm constantly asking if anyone comes here from twitch because um from my understanding of it it's unlikely that twitch will ever send a viewer my way until i get ridiculously massive like i'm talking like thousands of viewers before like i'm talking like thousands of viewers but like in order to get myself known in the uh the just chatting channel twitch twitch isn't going to send me anyone twitch will never recommend the channel so um yeah error reader says i don't like the idea of trying to please an ai algorithm i mean i prefer it to pleasing a human right <laughs> like at least the ai at least an ai unless it's been tampered with doesn't um the ai has no um has no preferences, I guess. Like, it's just following... It's just, like, following its rules and following its patterns. It's not like a person who, like, I have to agree... You know, I have to agree with their political leanings, or I have to, uh... You know, I have to... I have to I have to kiss their boots or dress a certain... Basically, I don't have to make people like me, except for you. The only people I need to like me are you. I don't need to... You know, I don't need to make a like a some TV, you know, some studio executive think I'm cool. I don't need to make a marketing agency want to. Anyways, I would prefer to work for an algorithm than to work for a human because I uh, because the AI hopefully is only judging on things that matter or the things that matter for your shared interest. I should say things. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I mean, gra yeah, granted, like, a AI is only, like, garbage in, garbage out is, is, the, is the rule for AI. Like, it's only as good as the data they feed into it. But you have to remember how, how skewed and biased humans are. Um, yeah, like us, like, an AI is not affected by the, should not be affected by the halo effect. Um, for instance, like, if a person looks good, People tend to think that, like, you know, people who look good, people tend to think that they're good people or that they're more, that they're smarter than they are. And, and, and AI isn't, doesn't even know what you look like, right? It doesn't care. So, yeah, like, you can't have overtraining effects. You can't have runaway effects, as brought up by Keladon K in chat. Um, but, uh, yeah, the human data, the human data, it's, like, uh, Hopefully the, hopefully the data that's being fed into a recommendation system is what people want to watch. Because at the end of the day, like, what's best for the viewers is if the... So what's best for the viewers at the lowest level is that, the, is that any kind of algorithm or AI shows you things you want to see, right? I mean, you go to YouTube to watch video, right? Like, it makes... You go to YouTube to watch video that you enjoy watching. So, like, if it's showing you video you enjoy watching, then it's working. Um... You know, like the problem, you can, you can make, uh, we, there is a very salient debate over the responsibility that the AI and its keepers have for not just showing people things that they want to watch or that they will watch, but showing people things that are good for them and hiding things that are bad for them and like their role in shaping a society. Yeah. 
I'm still... <sighs> That's a, it's a really hard debate. I come down in the sense of, like... What's the way of saying it? Um, the, folks who, the folks who create the algorithms, I don't think they should be trying to... What's the way of saying it? They shouldn't be trying to push an agenda, but they should be trying to squash dangerous or antisocial agendas. Uh, like, it's... I think it's 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 a there's a big difference between saying these are the things you must see and and saying uh, these are things that are hazardous if you're influenced by um, yeah you know I I'm, but the yeah, it's still not a fully still not a fully formed opinion look you can there the people will say stuff like oh yeah like the demonetization like you can't express yourself like. You can't, you can't express yourself, like, you can't, you know, like, I can't swear, or I can't, like, talk about heavy subjects. Like, okay, suppose YouTube didn't exist, right? Suppose you want to start a radio show, or start a television show, or get a movie through Hollywood. What, you really think your job would be easier? Really? Get the hell out of here. Uh, yeah, Rewound VHS says, you got the PCB printed yet? I ordered it a few weeks ago. Um, if... If it, if it did show up, then I haven't found out about it yet. I suppose I could check my email. Uh, everyone, everyone, close your, everyone close your eyes so you, don't, so you don't see my email. Not seeing anything yet. Uh, yeah, let me, maybe, maybe I missed something. Let me just check. Let's search for Next PCB, who is the sponsor of this episode. Make sure, if, you're, if you're interested in building any sort of circuit uh, or you're building electronics or anything of the sort, then... Get, make sure you use the link in... I'm going to put the link in the chat right now. Sponsor! Bang! Uh, yeah. Um, register and get a coupon for $100 in free circuit boards, which goes a really long way. Next PCB rules because they give you all kinds of options for your board that ordinarily would cost a fortune extra on other uh, quick turns overseas circuit manufacturers. Uh, for instance, this board that we're doing here... Let's take a look. Uh, so this board that we're doing for this project has drill hits spaced very close together. It has all kinds of internal tab routing. It's a very large board. It has to be two out. It has to be two uh, two millimeters instead of one point six for extra sturdiness. Um, yeah, it's got uh, it's got it's gonna have matte black uh, matte black uh, solder mask with white silk, and all of that is all that is included. So yeah, um, if you have. If you're using another uh, another manufacturer and you're starting to feel, you're starting to feel like uh, like they're not like if you're starting to feel like you're outgrowing them, then definitely check out Next PCB and take your circuits to the next level. We're going to be using Next PCB to make all of the pro all the boards for this project. So in the meantime, uh, let's let's log in. I'm going to move this over here. Let's log in and see what happens. I've never actually logged into the site. I don't want you to see my password or even how many characters are are in my password. Uh, let's see. Do do do. Again. Mm-hmm. Let's see. This should work. There we go. Let's see. Production status. Quote info. Did they did they order them? Uh, what's going on here? Did I did did they did they place the did they place the maybe they didn't place the order for me? Uh, huh. I thought they were. Uh, maybe maybe that's uh, maybe maybe that's the issue. Uh, maybe they didn't, I, I, I thought they were going to, I thought they were going to put the order in for me, but, um, yeah, maybe they didn't. I don't know why my email client's taking so long. Oh man, my email client's being so slow. Uh, why is this taking so long? It is opening, you're opening an email. There is, this should not take more than a few seconds. Come on. Uh, let's see. Two weeks ago. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Sorry, I have nothing to say right now. I'm just waiting for this freaking email to load. I don't know why the hell it's taking so long. 
All these emails should be stored on my computer. Why is this taking so long? Uh, let's see. Everything went through. Oh my god. Oh, it's because there are 137 emails in this chain because we haven't changed the subject line. That's That's great. Okay, quote info, production file confirm before... Fa Oh, crap. Did I just not order them? I think I was supposed to order them. I thought they were... Oh, man, I thought they were going to place the order for me. Oh, crap. Oh, man, I really screwed the pooch here, didn't I? Um... Oh, that sucks. I thought they were going to place the... Uh, I, thought, I thought they were going to place the order for me, but it looks like they didn't. Oh, that's bad. Yeah, because I thought they were going to... Uh, yeah, because like they were gonna, I mean they were they were sponsoring. Um, all right, well I have to reach out. I have to reach out to my rep. Well, that explains why it's taking so long for them to show up and why I haven't heard anything. <sighs> Damn it. Uh, yeah, it's the nature of the game. Um, yeah. There's someone was asking earlier how, why why I've fallen behind uh, uploading the stream replays, folks. There is, I have so much more work to, keeping this channel rolling is so much more work than I'm capable of handling. I'm so far over my head. Uh, the fact that I have, the fact that I can even make it here every week and release anything at all is miraculous. I mean, geez, like this right here, you're seeing all of this is only one part of only one project. It's only one, it's not even all the 3D modeling I have to do for this project. It's two hours in, we haven't even started modeling. This is, and this is just like an accurate representation of like my, my day. I still have, you know, I still have three hours of footage or something to cut for this one episode, and then I have three follow-ups to make. This, there's more here than I can keep on top of. I'm doing, I'm doing my best. <laughs> I appreciate everyone who's, uh, who's being so patient. Uh, anyways, oh, for Christ's sakes. Well, it doesn't matter whether I order it right now or not, because they're in, because in China it's the middle of the night. Um, alright, well, let's actually do what we came here to do today. Well, crap. Uh, let's actually do what we came here to do today. Let's open up our picture-in-picture -picture window so you can keep an eye on the, keep an eye on our, uh, our print. Uh. I didn't know, I, I, oh, jeez, like, here's, here's the, let's see, let's open this up, oh, this better not take ten, 10 minutes, okay, so yeah, here's the email I got from them, and this was after, and like, I didn't, I didn't submit this to their, to their site, I was working through my rap, and yeah, it says, quote, yada, 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 and then this is right here, like, in a line of text under a recap in a line of text, same font, no line break, under a recap of the of like the uh, the requirements of like the parameters. It says in broken English, confirm the file before fabrication. I think. So I blew it. Yep, hundred percent. I straight up, straight up screwed the pooch. All right. Well. No sense, no sense crying over spilt milk. What's what's dead is dead. So uh, I'll order that as quickly as possible, and uh, I'll, I'll figure figure it out. Oh, that's bad. <sighs> yeah. Um, yeah, I'm doing I'm doing my best, but can only do so much. This is obviously obviously this is not something you're gonna have to deal with in the next PCB. <laughs> Uh, there should be no confusion uh, on your end because you'll be you'll be placing your order through the website, which I guess I was supposed to do anyways. I, he specifically told me to give him the Gerber files. <sighs> Whatever. C'est la vie. This is what I get for playing video games instead of learning Mandarin. Okay, so here's what we got. We got this. Let's save this before anything goes wrong. Uh, so here's what we've got. Uh, we want to take this and change it so it's two parts. And the question is how we're going to go about doing this. So we have a few options. One of them is we take our design. At, basically, we 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 put a mark on our on our um, 
We, t we put a mark on our timeline, saying like this is the cutoff. Saying this is the cutoff point. Uh, basically, we put a mark on our timeline saying if you want to print the the the, uh, the plank version, start print it from here. If you want to print the two part version, the split version, print it from here. So that's one option. A problem with that is it's not the most elegant way of going about this because we're going to be recreating a lot of geometry and things. We're going to have to change things around. Another way to do this, but is to fork the pro basically copy the entire project and then backtrack where necessary and redesign, you know, re rebuild it to be uh, to be split. The advantage of that is. Um, the advantage of that is going to be a more elegant model that's easier to edit. The problem with that is if we end up having to go back and make a mod make a change, make a make any sort of tweaking or tuning or modification, we'd have to do that. We have to remember. We have no reminder. It'd have to be all on me and my my overworked, overloaded brain to manually do the same tweaks to two versions of the file in the same places. And considering that I can't have two files open and Considering that, I guess I can have two files open in Fusion at the same time, so that's another option. Um, Digital Phoenix says, create a basis single project and use those components. See, that's not going to work, because um, that's not going to work, because, for instance, we can't modify a... Uh, a like, alright, another option, sort of like this, is to backtrack and or basically amend the sketches, edit the sketches, so that the same sketch can so the same sketches can generate the left hand version and the right hand version and the plank version, and then we just ex selectively extrude or not extrude based on what we care about. And that is going to have a lot of because of the nature of that, the nature of that is going to cause a lot of overlapping geometry that I'm going that is also again going to have to be kept on top of. This is the one thing that Fusion fundamentally fails at in terms of parametric design. It's the one advantage it's the one advantage of parametric design that Fusion cannot capitalize on, and that is the ability to modularize your design. Uh, the ability to make something that creates a base for a number of other things. And it's not really practical here. So yeah, so let me think this through. The one, all right, the best way to do this, the most elegant way to go about doing this is to fork the file and just basically backtrack and edit the file. Um, that way you get, uh, that way like, you know, we have separate files that have all, you know, all the unique aspects of it that are going to be very, it's going to be very simple and obvious how each, uh, like basically how each step affects the finished model so it makes it easier to edit, but it's going to be time consuming. We need to take whatever option is as fast as possible because, again, we are always racing against the clock to produce episodes. And, uh, to, yeah, we're, we're racing against the clock to produce episodes. This episode has to be completely finished before the second... Yeah, this episode has to be completely finished before the second week of October. Because So I only have three weeks to finish this entire thing, including the video, because then I have to immediately start working on the... Uh, Ah, the Hello Wearables episode. So we have to take whatever's fastest. Another option here is to try to basically slice the design up and kind of mash bits together. Uh, yeah. Jeff Hardy says, could you not design as a split version so it has the features, and if you want the single solid version, everything's the same minus the split? Uh... Well, so if we're going to end up selling this thing, uh, if, if, we, if we end up selling this thing, we're going to have to inventory circuit boards. And um, bas so basically, I want, to, I want this project, the idea here is to make a project that other people from the community are going to be able to make. And the people who are most interested in mechanical keyboards are people who already have mechanical keyboards, who may not want to buy another mechanical keyboard. So in, by making it a split keyboard, uh, I can make this of interest uh yeah i can make this of interest to people who um already have a keyboard so let's think here so these designs completely overlap so so let's think, let's, let's think out loud here so these designs completely overlap except for hmm, okay one thing we could do is maybe we could like 
basically cut this, cut the left part off and combine it with the right, cut this and combine it with this. Uh, basically take the existing drawing and just like slice it up and move parts around to make it, um, basically slice parts up and move it around to turn it into the, um, uh, turn the split version. Let's see. Let's see if that would work. So let's open up our analyses and let's uh, pull up a section plane here and let's see what the geometry looks like. Here, let's get this so you can actually see it. Uh, let's see. Uh, Nessa Dream says removing edits or features should be easier than managing two versions, especially if their fix is to be done on both sides. Removing. Uh, yeah, you gotta be really careful. Fusion files uh, end up being very sensitive. Basically, once once a once a model is at any sort of complexity, such as this one, uh, such so, so, such as this one, um, basically, once a model reaches a certain level of complexity, uh, making any changes will cause propagating downstream failures. It'll cause basically cascading problems. So you want to, even though you can go back in time and retroactively edit things, you want to do that as little as possible. Uh, I'm sure there are ways to, you know, set the file up to minim to like make this less likely, but I will be damned if I can figure it out. So I'm thinking that we probably it, it, the best the best case the best way to do this. Why is this always facing away from the camera whenever I move it? Freaking god, this is so annoying. Why is Fusion being such a being such a bastard? Best thing to do is to basically design the model and then modify and then like basically modify it. If possible, pull bits of it together such that uh, what? I'm confused. Uh, pull bits of it together such that um, editing the pieces also edit the uh, the downstream parts and I think this could be the way to go basically here let's just let's just dive right into it let's hide the section plane all right so this is gonna cause this is pretty on uh, that's the way of saying it this is um, be pretty say unceremonious I should say but yeah let's hide the lettering uh, let's get the where are our pieces here this is uh this is part of the plate let's see Nameplate, nameplate. Okay, all right. So let's create a new. First, let's 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 clean this up a little bit. So we're gonna create a new component, and we're gonna call it uh, nameplate. And we'll drag these two pieces in there. I said we'll drag two pieces in there. Why is it not letting me put? What? Um, why is why is why is this? Um, why, why, why isn't this letting me move these, uh, move these bodies to our component? I'm very confused. This should be able to, do I have to be able to edit it? Is that the problem? No, I'm really confused. Why is this not letting me move the, f the bodies over? I'm so confused. Because I, I, I'm sure I set this up with the next PCB logo. Oh my god, is it just me? Like, the, did I just forget this or did they change this? How on earth did this happen? Like, how, how, I, I'm, I swear I knew how to do this. Like, I swear I've done this before. So I can create individual components. Is it possible then to just combine them? Can I rename this maybe? Uh, it's not even letting me move them between components. I am profoundly confused. What the hell is, what the hell happened? Why can't I? I'm, I, I'm super confused here because I, I, I literally did this. Cut paste. Do I have to? Do I have to do that? Do I have to like cut them, and then select this and then paste them? C 
cut and then it's not giving me the option to paste. I'm super confused right now. What is happening? This is not something that should be difficult. Like literally all I'm doing is moving bodies into a component. I don't know why this is like, I've done this a thousand times. What the hell am I doing wrong here? So confused. All right, yep. Nested Dreams is correct. When we run into trouble, we give up. Um, all right, so we'll just manually hide this. Uh, all right, you know what? I think we should at least, at least group them. Please let this not... Uh, let's see, create a new group. We're going to call this... Uh, we're going to call this nameplate. Let's move this in. I found out that you can no longer print everything in a group at once. You can only print everything in a component. Uh, Super Kurtoval says you have to be at the end of a timeline. I don't see why I should. I don't see why I'd need to. Uh, no, it wouldn't help anyways. Wait. Wait, you can only... Wait, what? Wait, what? You can... What? You can only move file... You can... What? You can only create new components at the end of the timeline since when and th but then we can just move the that move that back what why why is that what the hell that's bizarre this has to be a bug super Kurtoful was right yeah uh with, why it how could it have always been like that? I've never noticed this. Like I've I've made like like look at all these like look at all these designs I've made. This is only one project. Like I've made tons and tons of of designs in Fusion. Like how have I never noticed that? So, there's something something fishy's going on here. This there's some monkey business afoot. Well, let's get the let's see. Let's get the, the frames out of here, OLED buttons. Let's get the OLED buttons out of here. Get that out of here. No, get this and this out of here. Yep. All right. So I can't move this back, but I can move that. I'm, oh my gosh. Yep, we're having a, we're having a serious fusion moment here uh man i completely lost my train of thought this threw me for such a loop all right well we definitely don't want the the circuit board we're gonna get that out of here okay so this is the me this is the frame and uh basically what i'm thinking here is we're gonna move we don't want this sliced in two but effectively uh we're going to slice it straight we're basically going to slice this thing straight down the middle. And we're going to take this part here and and just paste it on top of here. And take this part and paste it on top of here. So, yeah. Um. Yeah. So we're going to keep this here. We're going to suppress it. All right, where's where's this line? Where did this get cut? Uh, so what what cut this into? Where's the what was the cutting tool? Because um, yeah, is this the yeah? This is the one that's this is the one that sliced it in half. All right, so we don't, yeah, this is, so this is a problem. We're going to want this, hmm. So we're going to edit this. Oh, this is, wait, no, that's, 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 that's wrong. That was, uh, that was for the feet. That was when we were trying to put the feet on the bottom. Uh, we never ended up using that. Well, where's that, 
what's what is slicing this in half then? Um, oh, I can't even find the. We, all right, so sketch eight. That's the that's the one that we use to cut this thing in half, and that's completely arbitrary. So we are going to oh, we're going to project here and here. Right, we're going to project here and here. We're going to draw a line in between. This, is this? Yep, that's already vertical. So we're going to add a point, uh, dead center here, and then we're just going to make this coincident with this so that it splits, so it splits it in half. Coo, coo, coo. So we're actually going to change this. You know what, this is not a terrible place to not a terrible place to, um, uh, you'll see. Oh, oh, that's a burn. Oh, I burned myself in a soldering iron. Okay, we got a subscription. Ship Shoop, thanks a lot for, uh, for the sub. I really appreciate it. So let's edit Sketch 8 again. Uh, is this really the way to go about doing this, though? Hmm. Uh. It's just, yeah, this just isn't, um... yeah, it caused all kinds of downstream problems if I, uh, if I tried to make the two of them together. So, yeah, uh, let's look inside here. So we're going to have to move this, we have to move that. Um, hmm. Yeah, there's no, there's no good way to go about that. It's no good way to go about doing this. Hmm. Uh, I guess I got too. I guess I got so fixated on finishing the finishing half, uh, on finishing the whole thing. I, I didn't. I didn't design forward to. Uh, but then again, that would have taken longer. Design, I was going to say, like, I didn't design into the future to make sure that I could easily split it in two, but, but that would have made things take longer. And um, it's better to finish one half and then another, because if I have to just drop this project, I can just give up on the split part. And, uh, yeah, if, if I drop this project, just give up on the split part, and we still have a, a keyboard. <laughs> so, yeah... Well, let's let's stop and think for a sec. So, what we need to add around the edge is basically another one of these lips. Let's let's bring the board back in and take a look at it. So, basically, we just need to to modify this and add this back in. All right. So, here's what we can do. So, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make this visible again. We're going to go back to split body, right? Except we're going to split. All right. So before we had the thing split, we had the, so this bit right here, the top part, we don't need to split it. We already had it split because we're going to, we've been trying to fit this thing into a, um, uh, I'm trying to fit this thing onto a Prusa. And it's too wide. So we already had that split, so we don't need to worry about that anymore. But now we want to split this, but we're also going to split the board itself. And we're going to use this again as a splitting tool. So now we have hacked the... Now we've hacked this, both of these in two. So now we're, uh, now I'm going to move them apart, make it easier to edit. So we're going to move... Uh, let's see... So, Oh, for Christ's sakes, deselect that, please. We're going to move this, this, and this. Yep, we're going to move all three of these. Uh, and uh, let's, let's make our nameplate visible again. We're also going to move this. Bodies. Actually, no, wait, no, we're going we're gonna to hide the nameplate. We're going to have to make a new nameplate. We're going to have to make a new nameplate because we're going to have a different... Um, we're gonna have different constraints to worry uh, to worry about. Okay. Anyway, so we've got these pieces here. So I'm just going to move them. Mm, never mind. <laughs> Let's see. 
We're going to move this off to the side, make some room. And I want to capture the position. What's going on here? Shouldn't this be giving me, shouldn't this be saying capture position? Or maybe I had it checked already. Okay. So now we just slice the friggin' thing in half. Cool, cool, cool. Okay. So now we're just going to create new sketches and just basically recreate the geometry that we care about. Yeah, super duper easy. So let's make it happen. So we're gonna create a sketch. We're gonna do it here. And uh, yeah, let's, let's Pretty much what we're going to do here. Um, so what's the best way of doing this? Let's see. Well, yeah, we're going to project. Well, first we're first. Let's let's project as much as uh, as much as we can. Uh, I mean, yeah, we don't. We don't. We're not going to need to add any more screw holes. Oh, hey, look what's done. We're going to let that cool off because it's like three hundred degrees. And then we'll uh, then we'll finish assembling this uh, this mock-up of the board. In the meantime, okay. In the meantime, let's uh, project all the good stuff. Basically, I want to take what we've already made and just mirror it, which which is going to be nice and quick. It's going to cause a lot of problems. Let's see, it's going to cause a number of problems if we ever change anything down the line. But we have to make. Sacrifice. Yeah, you gotta. We gotta make some. Gotta make some sacrifices. You have to make. Uh, gotta make some concessions. Oh, I should be using the space mouse. I get so. I got so into it. I completely forget about my space mouse. It's the mouse from space. So let's project all of these. Ah, drop a piece on the floor. So basically, I want to mirror the details from here over here and uh, what's the best what's the best way of going about this because hmm. we couldn't let's see we could just mirror it in the center yeah okay so let's uh, let's try this I'm gonna create a construction line following the board it's important that we follow so we're gonna we're gonna basically mirror part of this, but we have to remember to mirror it by the board instead of by the enclosure, because otherwise we'll have too much space on one side and it won't uh, won't look good. Basically, when you're trying to make something look good, right? If you want to make one of your projects, you want to make one of your projects look good, the main thing to like the main things to do are first off make it symmetrical. Uh, yeah, people are very people are very sensitive to things being asymmetrical. Uh, but another, yeah, but also try to be. Uh, you want to be. Jeez, I, I hit M for move instead of mirror. Uh, you want it to be symmetrical, but you also want to reuse dimensions as often as possible because that gives it a sort of unity of uh, a sort of unity of design. It makes it look. Um, that's, the way, that's the way I'm saying this. I just realized I made a made a minor mistake here. I'm not I'm not uh, hmm. Hang on a second. I don't think we really have any other option now that I'm thinking about it. Um yeah, let, look, let's just see what happens. I I have a real problem with second guessing myself. Uh yeah. I got I got a real problem with second guessing myself as I as I design stuff. And uh Really got to get over that. Also, I've really got to start using my my space mouse because <laughs> otherwise uh, things are going to fly around too much. Um, yeah, you want to make things symmetrical. Uh, people are very sensitive to it, but you also want to reuse as many dimensions as possible and as many design motifs as possible because it makes makes it look makes the design look more unified. You don't want like you always want to create this impression that everything was. Uh, you basically you want to create this impression that you chose all the decisions you made. I know it might sound kind of weird to, to 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 put it like that, but you want to create the impression that nothing happened by accident. 
that you chose to make all the decisions you made. And a bit, and uh, yeah, part of doing that is reusing as much as possible. Oh, uh, yeah. so let's let's practice what we preach. And uh, here we go. Come on, why isn't what? Why isn't it? Oh, I haven't projected it yet. All right. Well, we can always uh, we can always mirror more. So let's see where this ends up. So this should end up. Yep, exactly where we want it more or less a carbon copy of the other side. So we just want to uh, do the same thing again, projecting and mirroring. <laughs> projecting and mirroring, and uh, hopefully we can reuse a lot of this geometry. We don't have to worry about things like screw holes or cutouts because, you know, it's the same board, yeah. Um, but yes, uh, super, like, things to keep in mind. Uh, it has to be internally consistent. You want to reuse as much as possible. You want to make it, uh, you want to make it symmetrical. Yep, you want to make everything you want to make everything look like there's a reason why it's there. You don't don't put designs in just for the purpose of having a design there. Everything needs a purpose, um, and anything even things that looks th the difference between a detail that looks half-assed and one that looks in t and the one that looks utilitarian is that one of them looks like you stop part way and the other looks like you put it there intentionally. So for instance, like if you have an exposed screw, right? In like you have an exposed screw, if it's just sitting there on top of the project, it might look kind of sloppy. So literally if you just in just countersink it, right? Just it all like take the exact same design except put a like add like cut a cylinder out of it so the head sits below the surface and now it looks intentional, right? You have you know uh, sharp corners because you, you didn't want to like start busting up the splines and making it look organic just round the corners that way you draw attention to the corner and you yeah that that way you draw attention to the corner in a way that shows I put work into this this was not originally rounded I rounded it myself uh, so yeah let's so uh, let's project some more lines so yeah draw uh, draw attention to your decisions it's kind of what I'm saying. Everything should look deliberate. Make it, yeah, everything should, it should always be obvious why you did what you did. And, uh, yeah, you can, and you can always kind of amp, kind of amp that up. You can put extra work into drawing attention uh, to the stuff you make. So let's also project this. Cool. And then we will do the same thing. We're going to mirror it. Uh, yeah. And when it, you don't, um, yeah. Another another thing to to keep in mind is, don't confuse beauty and and designed. The goal isn't necessarily to make it look beautiful because you know that can take that you know that might take skill that you don't necessarily have. That might take skill and special training. That, uh, you, that I certainly don't have. Uh, the goal isn't necessarily to make it beautiful. The goal is to make it clear that a person designed this deliberately. That, that, that there's intention behind this. Yeah. Oh, we got ourselves a raid? From who? Who's, who's raiding us? Get out of here, you crazy people! Get lost! Welcome to Void Star Lab, the hardware hacking workshop here in Suburbs of Denver, Colorado, designing ourselves a pretty neat mechanical keyboard. Uh, what do you think? Is it going to be? Is it cool enough by now? I guess we don't need to. We don't need to speculate. I can just pull up the. I can just pull up the dashboard for the 3D printer, and we can see how hot it is. So it looks like our bed is 65, and our filament is 285. Okay, cool. Whoop. So yeah, let's uh, let's 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 res let's rescue this and see how it came out. We're building ourselves a custom mechanical keyboard, although the circuit board didn't show up because I didn't know I was supposed to order it. It's kind of a long story. <laughs> uh, kill me. So, uh, yeah, this is the top part. That's the top part here. Uh, let's just think here. Um, let's see, how many, uh, how, let's, let's take a look. I, I, I generally hide our numbers because they make me anxious, but okay, it looks like we got like 10 people. Okay, cool. Welcome, uh, welcome noobs. Um, yeah, welcome aboard.
Um, yeah, enjoy enjoy the show. Uh, yeah, this thing, this this poor material is completely fused. Maybe this material was a bad choice. Whatever it is, uh, we'll deal with that in a sec. Let's come to the bottom of, or come to the bottom. Let's uh, get to the end of this part of the project so that we can start it printing while we work on other things. Because it's already like three o'clock, and I want to finish this part. Uh, where are they coming from? Who's the other? Uh, who's the other streamer? Are there are there other people making things on Twitch? I thought I came up with this idea. <laughs> Um, all right, so let's see. I think this, I think this should be all right. So we're basically going to recreate the, uh, we're basically going to recreate the geometry from the, uh, let's see, why does it keep undoing, why, why does it keep undoing the, um, oh, for Christ's sakes. E pun man, thanks a lot for the sub. I really appreciate it. Uh, why does it keep, like switching back automatically between um, uh, wireframe view and regular view. And why the hell didn't I realize I was supposed to order them myself? The guy told, I'll tell you why. The guy specifically told me to give him the files. Uh, my rep specifically said to send him the Gerbers, which I guess, I guess, you know, it's my mistake for assuming that meant like, I guess that's my mistake for assuming that I wasn't supposed to order them myself, but I don't know. I'm feeling a little robbed here, and I, I don't think I'm being completely, uh, I don't think it's completely unfair. Like, I don't think I'm, I don't think I'm being too entitled here, I guess is what I'm, is what I'm saying. Uh, there we go. All right, so. What, why is it, why is it cutting? Like, ah, uh, is, is there a way to disable that? So let's see here. So we've got our sidewall, right? Is that, uh, let's just make sure that's actually set far enough away from the board. Yep, that looks about right. All right, so let's, uh, per let's see, we're going to join and we're going to get that up to, uh, up to here, correct? Yes, cool. One thing we want to make sure is that we haven't added or removed any bodies. Okay. All right, so that recreated, let's see, that recreated that part. Mm. Is this going to work? Because this is now going to have a uh, chamfer on this end. Uh... I'm going to have to recreate this. I can't pull this too far apart. Dill Z, thanks so much for the five subs. I really appreciate it. I really appreciate it. I need to look up and I need to look up exactly what, you know, what a subscription actually gives you. I say, I know how it works on YouTube. But uh, yeah, welcome, welcome all the noobs. Uh, welcome everyone to Void Star Lab. Uh... So this go up, did, this, did I bring this up too far? No, I just didn't bring this part up far enough. Okay, so now uh, we need to extrude again. We're missing, I think we're missing a part. Yeah. Yeah. Whew. Yeah. Tell you, absolute hardest part of this job, absolute hardest, bar none, is talking and making 3D models at the same time. Yeah, toughest, uh, toughest part of the, uh, toughest part of this entire operation. Uh, all right, so it looks like there's a little gap. Okay, so there's supposed to be a bit of a gap here. Okay, so let's, so we're going to extrude this. We're going to start from here, and we're just going to continue this up to here. Boom. Okay, so that should match it doesn't so we're missing a tight we're missing a bit of geometry here i guess we're also supposed to uh, extrude here okay 
It's fine. Let's connect these. Oh, let's just edit our extrusion here. All right, I think this should do the job. So now these two sides should be symmetrical. Pretty freaking close. I don't know why this is, huh, got that little extra bit there. Whoa, 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 whoa. What's going on here? There we go. Wait, what, what, wait, huh? I deselected that part. What, why, why did it extrude? Oh, I think, wait, huh? I'm really confused. Why did this, why, what's, what's this little piece here? That's going to cause, uh, that's going to cause problems when we, what the heck's going on here? Yeah, this, this little bit here is going to cause problems when it comes time to, uh, uh, it comes time to chamfer. What the, where did that even come from? I'm really confused. When it comes time to chamfer it to match, is this in the sketch? Yeah. All right, so it looks, hmm. Okay, so it looks like this is just a place where the, all right, it's just a point where the two halves don't line up. Okay, this is fine. This is fine. Uh, we're just going to then, we're going to do a little, a little, a little snippy snip. So we've got these little bits of vestigial geometry. I've got to stop using the friggin' scroll wheel. Uh, we'll just uh, extrude these all the way. I don't know why this keeps switching back to wireframe mode. I definitely didn't do that. Slice those off, and then we'll move forward, and then it should be a smooth transition from one to another. Excellent. Good God. Okay, that that looks pretty good. That's uh that's pretty close to a pretty close to a mirror, a mirror, you know, like a carbon copy. Let's see if we can now adjust the. Uh, let's see. So let's see if we can now continue the chamfering around, or if it's going to cause weird artifacts and crap at the at the corners. All right. So let's or mitering chamfer. No, nope, we're doing a chamfer. All right. So, yeah, there's no way to carry this over. You'd have to make it parametric. Yeah, this is going to be a problem. It's not, yeah, it's not, it's not letting us. All right. I think the best way to do this then is actually to sweep it. Let's see if this works. see what the profile so here's our profile uh, we're just gonna try to sweep it along here and see if this works hey hey looks like we got some uh, looks like we got another sub you like my you like my hype train sound effect Let's see if this works this looks all right it added this artifact it added these artifacts here I don't really understand why Uh, perpendicular, parallel, taper angle, twist angle. Do a guide rail, maybe? Can we use a... Uh, will, this, will this work better if we use a guide rail? No? Alright, well, a few little blobs are... A few little blobs are, are better than wasting hours on this crap. So, uh, we're just going to deal with it. And uh, let's just edit our, let's just keep our, our path going here. Why isn't, what's going on here? It doesn't consider this to be the same path. It doesn't consider this to be the same path, right? Well, well then, okay. 
Mm, that's weird. These are these these are connecting, right? Like these are intersecting. They're literally the same line. I'm so confused. Oh wait, huh? Maybe it will work if we disable chain selection. No. That's weird. Do we have to can do we have to keep cutting this? Um do we have to yeah, maybe if we sweep it ourselves. Uh, let's see. No more chain selection. Let's see. Again, we have a little bit of a little bit of crud there, uh, but maybe that'll go away if we chamfer it. Again, this is very. I, I I know this is a little on the sloppy side, but sometimes you have to make some concessions to uh, to get the project done faster. Yeah, that's not going to work. I thought it would be as easy as just. Rounding that three. There we go. Okay. So that's close enough. Good enough for government work. All right. So now we've just copied that over. I think that looks like, you know, that doesn't look bad. That doesn't look bad. Luxuriant squish says send it off after you print. Okay. I mean, that would work for me, but it. I, it would work for me, but like we have to be careful because I want I'm, tr I'm trying to make my projects for other, for like other people to make. I'm trying to make things open hardware, and uh, I have to be careful to. So someone someone said before like just make the uh, just make the the circuit board and like have people edit this like just have people split the model themselves if they're interested, and you know like that's doable, right? But for every extra step you put in, it cuts it dra it massively cuts down the the ability for other people to make the project. And if your goal is to build an open hardware project, you have to like developer experience it like as it were is basically the most important thing. Yeah, de developer experience is crucial cuz uh Remember that an open hardware project has to be marketed, sort of, like, in a way it has to be marketed the same way you would, um, you'd market a product. Because the same way you're trying to convince people, the same way you'd be convincing people to buy your product, you also have to convince them to make your project. Because, yeah, let's see, we have to mirror a bit more geometry here. Because, yeah, you're, you're, when you convince someone, when you're, you can't just come up with a product and expect people to buy it. You have to convince people to commit their money to it. And it's the same with a project. Because you have to, you know, sure, people might be able to, uh, it might not, you know, people might be able to make it on the cheap, even using parts they already have, but you're still asking them to commit time. And uh, that requires you to, uh, you know, do the work. A big part of that is making the project super easy to make. Every single step you require the user to do, especially if it involves things like, you know, knowing like special knowledge, huh, thinking something through, designing something. Every every single time you do something like that, uh, it r further cuts the chances that anyone actually works on your project. And uh, yeah, that's it's not you know, it's not what you want. I mean, it's not what I would want. So how, how do we want to do this? So we've got the first part that goes in the bottom, All right? Yeah. I'm trying to think this through. So we've got the bottom end. It doesn't, it doesn't include the top part. Yeah, it's only going to include this bit here. Hmm. Oh, I should be. I, I should just be checking out the other side. Yeah. Got to be using the other side as reference. Keep forgetting. I'm just. I'm just mirroring this. Could I have mirrored the geometry? Is an interesting question. I don't. I think it would be harder to mirror the geometry than to mirror the. Uh... <sighs> would it be easier to mirror the geometry? That's interesting. I, I think it might be harder because it'll start covering stuff up. Hmm, yeah, I, th I think it's easier to recreate the geometry. 
so this part let's see hmm all right so the pointy the pointy bit we don't want so this part looks all right we've got this here really confused and is it ever hard to model stuff while while doing the while doing the streams holy crap is it ever hard um And see through it. Uh, I think I made a. Yeah, I think I compounded my. Yeah, I, co I compounded my problem by adding too much. Um, mm, I projected the wrong stuff. Yeah, I, I, I projected the wrong stuff and I made my. Uh, made my problem worse. So let's see. We're going to hide the body. Hide the bodies. Yep, just like average Friday night. Um, all right. Smart thing to do here is to just scrap all this, scrap all the stuff we've done. So we have to be very careful here and use a combination of uh, the sketch. The, oh, I can't use the original sketch though. Oof. Oof. Mm. Man, yeah, I know this can't. Maybe, uh, maybe I should. Uh, maybe we should abandon this, and I should do this on my own time. Yeah, because I, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure I can make this an entertaining stream while I think this through. It's just too complicated. I'm doing. I'm doing my damnedest, but I think this is just too hard. Um. got uh let's see we've got got this here probably projected this as well i'm gonna i'll stick with this for a few more minutes but if we continue having this much trouble um I'll stick with this for a few more minutes but if we keep having this much trouble then um uh, fuck. uh man you see like even now i, I can't even explain like oh, for christ's sakes can't even explain what... All right. This is an overwhelming problem that I can't do while continuing to hold a conversation and to continue making this an entertaining stream. So I'm going to stick with this for another few minutes to see if we can punch through it and get over to something that is, that is easier for me to do while I, while I patter. But if this continues to be a problem, then... Um, I, if this continues to be a problem, we'll scrap this and then just move on to something else uh, that is more entertaining for you to watch. Because at the end of the day, this is a hacking session first, or it's a hacking session second, and an entertainment show content product first. So let's continue. Yeah, so let's try to get this. Let's try to burn this off as quickly as possible and get back to things that I can actually do while chatting. Uh, Super Kartoffel says, "What's the resolution of the displays on the Mirage keyboard?" I have an idea. They are all one twenty-eight by sixty-four, monochrome. Um, yeah, so let's let's try to finish this. Let's try to finish this up and get back to. Uh, uh, and I just realized that, like, even after even after we finish this up, we're still just gonna have to move on to. Um... Once once we finish this up, we're just gonna be moving on to uh, uh, doing the other side. So, I'm really caught here because, like, on one hand, I know this is boring as hell. On the other hand, the whole purpose of this show was to like let you. S the whole purpose of this show is for me to work on projects for future episodes, and uh, this is the project, right? This is the most, this is the best use of my time, so I think we're going to stick with it. So let's extrude. We're going to start here, and we're going to end here, and then we're going to need to cut 
so here's what had me confused. We're going to have to cut off other stuff. So half, yeah, because of the different shape here, half of this is going to be, half of this is going to be laid down and half of this is going to be torn up. So is this going to hit too much? It's going to hit too much stuff. I don't think so. Okay. So this is going to go in the opposite direction. We're going to start, or technically it's going the same direction. We're going to, this is why I was so confused, because half of this has to be added and half of this has to be removed. Mm. So this should create... So these two sides should be fairly similar. Okay, I actually needed to cut off more. Doot, doot, doot. Doot, doot. Doot. So now these should be symmetrical, and they're pretty close. Yeah, okay. So now we, now we, create, the, now we create the rest of it. All right. And then we need to... It should be easier to, to chamfer that part. Uh, this is. Yeah. Let's do this from the top so we can see what's missing. So, all right, let's cut. It's, it says it's cutting, but we're going to. Um, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna change that. So let's see, we're going to start from, uh, so we're basically going to copy this, and we're going to move on to the last part. Uh, we're going to, so we're going to start here, and we're going to end. Unfortunately, yeah, all right, so here's what we're going to, here's, here's how I'm going to do this. If, unfortunately, if you're listening and you're not watching, um, you're just going to have to skip ahead. Sorry. Uh, when I do the replay, I'm gonna I'm gonna set a mark right here. Where is it? Where's my mark button? Where's my mark button? Here we go. There we go. I'm gonna set a mark. So uh, if you are just listening, um, I'm going to put something up on the screen to tell you where to jump to because the problem is that modeling stuff in 3D is very visual, which forces me to have to very it's really hard. I have to constantly describe exactly what I'm doing, which is really hard because it's like, you ever try, try to describe something in 3D geometry and then do it a 300 more times in a row. So it's very fatiguing to explain what's going on. So we're just going to not explain what's going on. And I think that should relieve enough mental strain that uh, we can get back to, that we can, uh, we can build stuff while still, um, that, you know, I can actually like, do the point of the friggin' show, which is, show you building stuff <laughs> yeah i mean yeah if we just quit working on projects as soon as it becomes like yeah as soon as it becomes marginally difficult then that kind of defeats the entire purpose of the show doesn't it yeah the cha the challenge here is really try is really trying to explain everything that's going on to an extent that somebody will can keep up with this without looking at the screen which is way too much to uh that's way that's way that's that's way too much uh yeah i am a i am a cybernetically augmented uh elon musk level super genius but uh there are still physical limits to what i can what i'm capable of doing all right, so this is looking pretty good. Let's do the same thing we, uh, let's see here. So this is looking all right. Uh, man, I'm having so much, whew. Yeah, it's hard to make the, um... ah, it's hard to use the space mouse. Yeah, it seems like the two things that seem to fatigue me the most, uh, Two, yeah, two things that seem to fatigue me the most are talking to people and doing stuff with 3D. So doing them both at the same time is just it's more than I can handle. Close enough. Yeah, the purpose of this, this chamfer here is just to get rid of the overhang. Uh, let's see. 
this is probably an overhang too, but it doesn't matter. Yeah, the whole purpose of this is to get rid of the overhang and make this easier to print. This up here is for cosmetic purposes. So let's try the sweep trick again. Uh, we're going to do this, and we'll sweep it along. This, let's see. Keep on, keep on sweeping. So this is going to cause, so this is causing problems. Uh, yeah, so this does not look right. Yeah, all right, so this is not acceptable. We're gonna have to, we're gonna have to get creative with, uh, with this. Cause this is, this part, like the, the other part's the bottom, right? Like it's fine if the bottom looks kind of, kind of crappy. So it's fine if the bottom side looks sloppy and kind of garbo because uh, it's the bottom. No one's going to friggin' see it. But the top has to look... It's got to look chef's kiss because people are going to see it. So we go... How, so how did this work on this side but not this side? Um, Alright, so... <laughs> So, so here's the, here, here's the, here, here's the problem. This is, uh, we're going to run in, yeah, this is not possible because the geometry we're trying to sweep here is, is after it has already been, um, geometry we're trying to sweep here has already been worked on with, you know, with this, uh, hmm. Basically, the geometry we're trying to sweep has already had a chamfer attack, uh, applied to it. Um, and that's causing... It's already had chamfers and, and, and like fillets applied to it. And this is causing all kinds of problems because it's hard to kind of reverse engineer that. So we really... The best option would be to just try to maybe remake the model without that. This is probably going to screw everything up, though. This is probably going to cause massive cascading failures. But let's see what uh, let's see what happens. Uh, Professor Snowball says the 64 pixels is rough. So since this is open source, you can orient. What do you what do you what are you trying to what are you trying to do with it? Uh. Yeah, see, it causes causes too many failures. Yeah, this is uh, this is a massive problem. Crap. So what I really like to do is we can instead mirror the original sketch and then just recreate all the things that we did to make it look like this. Uh, yeah, we can just recreate all the stuff we did to make it look that way. Alternately, um. Up. We can maybe, yeah, maybe like change this side to make it look different. I know this is not. Hmm. All right. Uh, yeah. So this is. We could just cut this part off. Let's do that. Oh man, everyone, everyone new to everyone who's new to this channel and. Twitch is probably like, oh man, this guy's such a friggin' amateur. <sighs> building projects and building projects and uh, building projects live while explaining every step of the way is substantially different. Let me tell you. All right, so this part here is causing a lot of problems. Well, let's see what we've made here. So yeah, this is the, this is where all the problems are happening. So let's get rid of this, and uh, we'll just change this detail. So instead of it, you know, having a symmetrical like rounded corner, instead is just a sharp corner. It's not. It's going to make it look asymmetrical, but that we can. Mm. It'll make it look asymmetrical, but we can get around this by. Uh, It'll make it look asymmetrical, but we can get around this by simply putting the pieces next to each other when we're taking video or taking pictures of it. 
And at the end of the day, we have to finish the project. We've got to finish this project as quickly as possible because uh, we have a lot of other videos coming up. Yeah, we've got to finish this project so we can move on. I, oh my god, I'm not going to be able to sleep tonight. I'm going to be kicking myself over not ordering those boards. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh man. Oh man, that is the most egregious failure I have made. That's the most egregious mistake I've made since starting this channel. Oh my god. That is like a... The knock-on effects of, of not ordering that are going to take... I'm likely never going to... You know, I'm likely never going to be able to fully overcome the knock-on effects of that. I'm probably... It's unlikely I'll ever be back on schedule. Yeesh, that is harsh. Yeah, I can't, I can't really make uh, mistakes with uh, with content. All right, well, whatever. We're not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not moping here. Just, you know, it's rough. I've been behind. I've been increasingly behind schedule, getting more and more burned out for ages, and I've been finally allowing myself to kind of, re you know, I've been kind of letting up the the pressure to kind of recover a little bit and this is a massive setback this is rough uh yeah this is going to take what otherwise w w could oh man yeah this is bad because if they haven't even shipped them out yet then it's well over it's a, assuming no pa assuming nothing gets like held up at customs or stopped or anything it's going to be two weeks before those things show up, and that means that it's going to be a death march to finish this, bef like, leaving enough time to start working on the, uh, oh, the Hello Wearables episode. This is really bad. Oh, well. well that's part At the end of the day, it doesn't matter to you. This is, this is my job. I'm not complaining. I have no right to complain. Uh, so let's see, how are we going to finish this up? So basically, I want to copy all the, I want to copy the details that we did here, up here. I think that's the way to do this. Pardon all the scrolling. There's, right now, there's a little too much on my mind to re remember all the nitty gritty stuff, like using the space mouse. Oh my god. Man, am I ever kicking myself over that. That was super duper dumb. Uh. All right, I've got the board up here. So we're gonna project this, 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 and this. So we should have everything we need. Uh, I just realized I don't have Discord open. If Brooke has been trying to say anything to me, then I have been missing all of it. Oh my, Unf I'm sorry. Uh, 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 unfortunately, uh, you can't, mm, let's see. I just keep scrolling. Uh, Christ. Um, oh, all right, anyways. Uh, yeah, uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Yep, I'm, a, I'm aware it's kind of going to cause all these problems. I'm, I know, I know, I know. It shouldn't, it should have caused only minor issues with the enclosure, though, with the bottom part. Yeah. So it should have caused just minor issues with the, the bottom of it. Uh, it doesn't seem to be the case. It looks like, yeah, it looks like we, got, we have a bit of a, hmm. Let's, uh, let's unhide this. All right, so this, yeah, so this completely blew apart our, all right, we're gonna have to start, we're gonna, all right, so we'll have to, we'll have to start uh, recreating this geometry uh, over again. So let's see, yeah, because this blew up the names of the, I, yeah, this blew up the names of everything. So, yeah, let's, uh, first, first order of business, we're gonna extrude this uh, all the way. Uh, 
Actually, no, it makes more sense to recreate this. Um, I think. No, no, I'm, I'm, no, I'm. Yeah, actually, no, I'm, I'm wrong. It does. It does make more sense to uh, to completely recreate this. So let's edit this. It's part of the process. I was rewatching this. Um, I was. I sort of end up rewatching a little bit of the circuit design stream. And oh man, it's really tricky because like there's a lot of backtracking, right? Like when we did the when we did the uh, the circuit board for this, I had to backtrack and redo a lot of it, r rip stuff up, rewire all that, and I felt really bad about it because it created this very stutter step, just like not a great show to listen to, I could imagine. But it really is the process. I'm really. It's hard to keep my, it's hard to stay focused here, because the idea here is really just, I'm going to show you, pro, like, I'm going to show you my workshop, and if it's boring, it's boring, because, that, like, that's the process. Like, I want to show you the process. It's really hard, because I really want to, ah, uh, because, yeah, this is, it's really tough. It's supposed to be, like, an, sort of, like, an add-on show, almost. Like, this is supposed to be, like, bonus, like, bonus stuff. Um, yeah, I'll have to copy that in, too. Uh, I want to do it this way. So this is supposed to be like a, a sort of like a bonus video. It's hard because like I want everything I show you to be like the best possible. Because I know that like everyone's like, you know, it's freaking 2021. Like everyone's standards are insanely high. Every, you know, if my if I make my stream even marginally momentarily uninteresting, like another one is just a mouse click away. Uh, but like at the same time. This is not supposed to, like, you know, consume my life. This is just supposed to... This wasn't supposed to consume my life. This is just supposed to be, like, a little something extra while I work on videos. So, it is really tricky to maintain perspective. Alright, so we have to do... Oh man, why is the friggin' space mouse flying all over the place? Alright, so we want to... So have we already projected this? Yep, I think we already projected that. So, oh my god. Oh, that's not helping at all. So let's... Uh, So it has to be this right here. So let's bring this over here. And that should create enough of a should create enough of a line that we can project this up. Yeah, extrude this. Uh, Nessa Dream says uh, you forgot that unlike YouTube, you can put the stream audio in the background with just a click. You can put a YouTube in the background. Um, yeah, you can, uh, whew. yeah, it's really hard to, uh, yeah, oh man, yeah, yeah, I know, I'm trying, one of the big question marks here is uh, whether to put music in the stream, which would give me more leeway to go into the tank, but it would kind of lock me out of doing any sort of replay, uh, yeah, I guess you need YouTube Red now that I'm thinking about it, if you're going to put YouTube in the background. Um, yeah. Part of the game, I suppose. Alright, so how does this work on this side? Um, we've got... We've got this, this bit right here. It has to come over to the side. Uh, alright. Here. So we're just going to create a line here. Uh, we're going to make this 45 degrees. Wait, how is it? How did it end up being 45 degrees? I'm, I'm, huh? It's weird. Cause yeah, it was it was the right number before, but I don't know why it was constrained against something. Uh, anyways. Let's mirror. Yeah, the lack of music is a YouTube thing. Every uh, 
every track increase every track you do increases the um, increases your risk profile of being copyright struck. So even though I think even like yeah I don't know I like the music but uh, it. <sighs> It, you have to be careful with it because it can cause uh, it can increase your 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 risk profile. If someone decides they don't like me, and they they just buy up enough of the music to get you know get the channel shut down. Twitch seems to be, I mean technically you can do that on Twitch too, but their content ID doesn't seem as good. Um, yeah. See, Toby Not says uh, you can put the music on a second channel, so it doesn't appear in the VOD. I mean, yeah, but like the second channel could could get shut down. But uh, I don't know. You get back to me. I prefer if the second channel doesn't get shut down. Prefer not to get struck or sued. Um, yeah. Let's see. All right. So hopefully this gives us enough. Yeah. So how does this work? Oh, geez. How does this work on this side? So this, so we got this blobby bit that comes out here. All right, so yeah, we're going to... If we do it this way, we're going to have another problem. Mm. Oh, he means like... Um, he mean, like record it. I don't know how to do that on... Uh, because then, I, then, then on uh, OBS, I'd have to record. I'm recording the whole thing. I'm recording the output, not each source. If I record each, oh my god! If I record each source, like that's two 4K cameras and five 1080P cameras, uh, combined along with a, a 1440P screen cap. I don't. Even, my hard drive is not large. My hard drives are not large enough to store even a single stream. Uh, I have. I have wondered because like. It, I, there's a lot of stream, like a lot of tools seem oriented to streamers. That, uh, huh. let me think here. What's the best way to do this? There, there are a lot of tools that seem uh, oriented to streamers that make that seem to make it easier. It seems to exist to make it easier to put music in a stream. And I don't really, I don't really understand that because it seems like you wouldn't want to put music in a stream because then you could get copyright claimed. So. Yeah, I don't really understand the dynamic. So what happened if we just stop this here and instead put the lip in the other side? Well, it would look a little weird for sure. Man, this is hard. Yeah, so like, I, I know like, like there are a lot of Spotify extensions, but like, how, you can't, you play Spotify music on a stream, you'll get, you'll get sued. Uh, yeah. So like, I, let, I don't know. I, I would imagine most people just don't care, and they're just like, like, their their plan is just to chop till they drop. Ugh. Robert Blackheart says, "I think you're worried about copyright strikes. Assuming you're music, assuming you're using music, you have the rights to stream or upload. Well, those rights aren't necessarily in perpetuity. Um, yeah, those rights just like, for instance, if, a lot of the stuff I use is Creative Commons." And uh, just because it's Creative Commons now doesn't mean it'll be Creative Commons forever. Uh, yeah, like it's not a license in perpetuity. All right, so we want to raise the lip on that side. Let's let's just jump into that first. Uh, let's see, extrude. Uh, this should not be a this should not be projected, or this should not be a construction line. This should be a real line. I'm a real boy. There we go. Okay, so we're going to start from here. And go to here. Yeah. Because, like, the greatest, the... Really, the, 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 the biggest possible... The greatest possible risk is someone says, uh, some of the whole pile of money says, hey, who's this Zach guy? Screw this, screw him. And uh, just, you know, finds like a whole bunch of my tracks, buys the rights to them, and uh, files three simultaneous copyright strikes and kills the channel. 
I mean, that's not, that's not how it works on Twitch, but uh, that is how it works on YouTube. And I would imagine they would then go, they would then go after me on YouTube and say like, yeah, so this is owned by the same person and, you know, they chose a complete lack of cop, you know, even if I was using open, like, even if I was using the Creative Commons music from the channel. It's less of an issue with the stream. This is more of a, more of an issue with YouTube. Or, you know, some a lot of money just doesn't like that my channel's doing well and they want to kill it. I think we just continue this and just end it here. Like, yeah, we continue this and end it here so it covers this bit. I think that's the way to do it. Yeah. Nessa Dream says, or commission music. That gets that gets super expensive in a hurry. Like, it's, it's affordable to commission a song. It's for, and you know, make, commissioning a song that's about five, ten minutes long, for, that's of, 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 of professional quality will cost you five, somewhere between like two hundred and a thousand dollars, depending. Um, but you're going to need a lot of songs. And remember, there are only a finite number of episodes I can use the same track in. I actually keep, I actually keep track of uh, how often I use each piece of music because I want uh, you to be able to listen to. Uh, I want to, I want you to be able to watch my videos back to back. So if, let's say I have, uh, let's say I use three videos, let's say I put the same, oh hey, John uh, Hansen, thanks a lot for the sub. Um, if I use the same track in three videos and YouTube plays them back to back, you will get bored and you'll stop listening. And you might even, yeah, you might stop listening. If that had been a different track, uh, you might have listened to t 10 episodes, right? You might have subscribed. But uh, yeah, you might think, oh, this guy's, I don't want to listen to this track again. Screw this. And that's it. My goose is cooked. It's important, yeah. Important to remember how um, how readily people will leave. Yeah, everyone. Um, people watching a video are, are hanging on by a thread. They really, and it's it's not it's not like a oh no one has any patience these days because that's like. It's, it's ridiculous to think otherwise. Like, it is the correct way to go about it. Don't, 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 don't get me wrong here. Uh, it just means that, um, just means that, like, everything remotely boring, repetitive, um, subpar needs to be relentlessly removed. There isn't any, there isn't any, uh, you shouldn't expect any tolerance for any of it. So let's see. Oh, Jesus, flying! Like for instance, like I know there's a limited number of times I can fail to use my space mouse and have this thing fly around before you, you know, quit to a different stream. Uh, Epon Man says, "Just use faith from the heart, F uh, faith of the heart from the Star Trek Enterprise intro. No one will want to claim that." Which version? You know, there are actually a number of versions. There's the the fir there there are two from the show. And it was actually a song before that. I don't think it was written for the show. I think I believe there was a version that was like for the radio. I don't know why anyone would put it on the radio, but I think it exists. So yeah, just gotta go where your heart will take you, I suppose. I, oh man, the the cojones on. The cojones on whoever decided to make like a actual song with lyrics as the Star Trek intro. The sheer testicles of that lad. So let's hide this. Uh, let's extrude. Do, 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 do. Start from here and finish here. Now I got Faith of the Heart stuck in my head. So fun fact, you know, you can't even sing a, uh, uh, do you know you can't even like hum or sing a copy, uh, a copyrighted track that counts as a performance. So let's see. Yep. That is a performance. And uh, unless you have the performance rights, there you go. And if you set something, uh, if you made a video, if you set something to that, uh, to that music, right? Let's see. 
Oh, no, made a... Hang on a second, made a little boo-boo. Uh, yeah, if I use that as part of a video, I would then get sued a second time. Uh, yeah, that would get, I would get sued a second time for uh, violating the synchronization rights of the, uh, of the copyright holder. Because uh, you need a... Oops, no! No! You need a separate license to, uh, to set audio to video. So, uh, yes, it'd be, uh, I'd be trampling on their synchronization rights as well. So, uh, yeah. For instance, anime music videos can get you sued, like, seven times. <laughs> uh, you usually, that's a, the risk profile for, I think, most anime music videos is fairly low, because, uh, if you're a kid, you're based, you're judgment proof. You don't have you don't have enough money or property to make it worth suing you. So I wouldn't worry too much. But uh, yeah, top of that, uh, having the show be monetized, um, quite you know work it, it it works against any claims of fair use. So I would lock myself out of that defense as well. Copyright law, arguably the most important part of the business. I'm pretty sure. Uh, hang on, how do I do this? How do we do this? Uh, oh nope, no. I, I I think I want all of yeah. I want all of this. Yeah, there we go. Arguably the most important part of the business. Uh. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Yeah, we're going to start here. And then go up? No, how do I do this? Oh. Mm, this is so annoying. Uh, so we want this to go over and down. Okay. Hmm. Oh, copyright law. You so crazy. It's funny how like all the legal YouTubers are all like they're all they're all copyright lawyers cuz cuz they're the ones that are cuz they're they like if you're a copyright lawyer nowadays, so much of your work is coming because of YouTube that I guess, like, you you learn enough about the business that you can start a successful channel yourself. I find that hysterical. All the legal YouTube... Like, all the legal YouTubers are, uh... are, are, are copyright people. Okay, I think this is right. All right, and then we, yeah, then we just continue all of this up. Yep, there we go. And then create the top part, and uh, then we recreate the chamfering and all that. So we're going to join. We're going to start here. Oh, my gosh, 3D modeling. I wonder if it's time to... I wonder if it's time to, to knock it off with Fusion 360. Hang on, I think I combined... Yep, made a boo-boo. I wonder if it's time to stop using Fusion. Like, because... Fusion is a bit temperamental. It has a lot of, like, gotchas and... Gim lots of gotchas and things to worry about. What happened here? Oh, yeah. Okay, cool. It has a lot of things that uh, you, gotta, you gotta worry about. And I wonder if the cognitive load of using it is too much to do while streaming. Well, for... It's a moot point, because I don't have any time to learn anything new. <laughs> uh, I spent all that time learning how to print with all those different 3D render filaments. Oh my gosh. I don't, I don't, uh, hmm, I just realized something. 
maybe oh, I, I think i could just yeah there we go we'll add all of these in because we were going to cut that out anyways i got faith of the heart going where my heart will take me Ugh. You can just says, I feel like you, you're kind of fighting the software by not using multiple components, using a single complicated sketch. Uh, well, the, the, I, I mean, the mental calculus is that it would take more time to start over. As for doing it differently the first time, like, I don't, I don't, th yeah, I don't, I don't think I could have, I don't think I could have done this any other way. Yeah, remember that I... That's a way of saying it. Like, you don't know how much... It's hard It's hard to do the math of... Oh, did I fuse this, I, I, did I fuse this in again? Uh, hang on a sec. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's hard to do the mental math because if you're trying to design ahead... Uh, if you're trying to design ahead and make something easier to change later, you're solving problems that don't exist yet, so it's not clear how much time you're actually saving. And uh, this can cause, this makes it really easy to overcommit. Uh, makes it really easy to overcommit time. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day, this is just part of the challenge of. Uh, uh, at the end of the day, this is just part of the, part of um, the inherent challenge in in doing what I'm, in doing this type of stuff, because um, always re you know you're always always racing against the clock, uh, and you you know you have to save time, but you're not always sure what's going to save time. Yeah, that might not. That might not that, that might not sound like it makes the like it makes the most sense, but um, yeah, you're just gonna have to trust me. Uh, it's really easy to basically what I'm saying is if I am too cautious, right? If I'm too cautious and I try to design too far into the future, I can end up spending too much time, and uh, then the project doesn't get done. Remember that I can't I can't miss my deadlines. If I miss my or like if I miss my deadlines, then it's not like I go to a client and say like, "Hey, this is going to take another week." Like every episode for the for freaking ever has now been moved down by a week. Every one of them. This uh, this thing with the circuit board, now every episode forever is moved down 2 weeks. I have to make up like 15 days of work uh, to accelerate the process. So let's see. These are 4 millimeters. The inner ones are 2.75 it looks like. Well, what's the six millimeter? Uh, hmm. Four millimeters in the inside, right? Really confused. All right. Uh, so we got. So this is four millimeters. Yeah. Part of the fun. I hope I. I hope I did a decent job of some, of, of explaining that. Uh, gotta basically what I'm saying is you gotta have faith of the heart go where the project will take you uh yeah the time the time constraints are kind of uh kind of ridiculous so this needs to this we had as two point seven five I think yeah and right and it, it, it's what makes this extra bad is that right now I because I overcommitted into an episode about this, like, 3D printer, um, then uh, I'm, I'm so far behind schedule that I have to figure out ways to make up, make up time wherever I can. You can says, feels like you're, uh, oh, hey, uh, Jeff says you're adding decorative features that are working against you. Well, I am a YouTube content creator. Remember that if my project doesn't look good, I, the, the, the worse my project looks, the worse the video performs. And if I'm trying to sell this product, remember, I'm never going to have any time to ever do any of this over. Or I'm only going to have time to, you know, do little bits and pieces over here and there. 
so if I ever want this project to do what it's supposed to do, right, which is to be a project people want to see the making of, right, and people want to maybe even get themselves, it has to look great. Uh, so, yeah, it's the... It's a way of saying it. The, the corners to cut are in functionality, which uh, will certainly be done. Which has certainly uh, been done. In fact, arguably, this entire project is... Uh, is exactly that, because um, this was supposed to be a cyber deck, but we fell back to doing a keyboard. Uh, yeah, it, the pro yeah the project uh, project's got to look good because um, it's what's you know it's it's what's advertising the video. So um, yeah. Uh, if the project were just for me, yeah, you're totally, you're totally correct. I would be, uh, I wouldn't be putting nearly as much thought into, uh, the aesthetic. But, uh, because this project's intended to be shared. Alright, so, yeah, because the project is not only intended to be shared, but intended to, like, make a video, like, it's, it's content, gotta look good. Gotta look good. So we've got to let's see. So this part has to we gotta move this over a little bit. Gotta open up a little more room so I can add that sham that champ here. That's how it's for. So this part here we want to actually Add, uh, we want to bulk it up more because then we can chamfer it around the corner. It's okay if we cut space out of. Um, it's okay if we cut into the nameplate a little. That's that's fine. It's fine to cut into the nameplate. Yeah, there we go. So then we also want this, we called this 2.75 before, there we go, okay. So this is going to give us more room to then uh, chamfer this, 4, 2, 3, 2.4, I forget what I, yep, 2.4, there we go. Cool, now it looks more consistent, or now it will look more consistent. Uh... Hang on a second. Uh, chamfer, yeah. Kind of the kind of the nature of the game. Remember that I'm I'm being judged on my on my projects a bit more a bit more harshly than I think most of the people who will copy them. So yeah, I I have to I have to do some techniques that I wouldn't ordinarily recommend. Like, uh, like usually I'd say like make it, you know, make it work before you make it look good. But remember that for me, making it work is making it look good because its function is to get people to watch a video or to build a, to build the project themselves. What do you think? Does that look, look similar? Similar, not the same. I don't think this was six millimeters. I think this is four millimeters. This, uh, this, this bend curve for there we go all right so I have to remember to add this here as well where's our there we go ah noise 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 we actually need to back up we need to backtrack a little bit because we've got to let's see Got this here. Yeah, we actually need uh, to chamfer this as well. Or miter this. Chamfer. I keep forgetting which is which. Hmm. It's weird. Oh, did I, did I pick the wrong... Uh, there we go. There we go. That's better. Cool. 
make it look uh, kind of make it look consistent. Incon people don't like inconsistency. Yeah, it's part of the it's part of the fun. Uh, yes, these don't look exactly the same. Let's hide the let's hide the sketch. Make it easier to see the see the parts. It looks similar, but not identical. I think this needs to be this needs to be thicker. Thick. Yeah. Let's see. So distance between here and here is no not 18.6 distance all right basically what we want to measure by plane there we go 4.8 so i had this set to four there's that's the problem right there 4.8 there we go there we go uh. Jeff asks, does fusion of global equations like SolidWorks, you can link properties to values, save a little time adding the chamfers? Yes, but then I would have to go back and edit all those dimensions uh, retroactively. So yeah, it would make it yeah, it would make it more parametric, it would make it easier to modify in the future, but um, I guess this, this, would, this is going to look the same. Uh, makes it more parametric, make it, make it easier to uh, modify in the future, but I'm not convinced that's something I'm going to need. Again, I have to be careful about solving problems that don't exist yet. Yep, the kind of the nature of the game. I think that looks pretty darn good. I think this looks about as close as we need it to. Of course, of course, we're not a we're not a we're not out of the woods yet. We still I, I only I only did one corner. Or I only did two corners, so we just need to carry this over. Uh, to here. Chamf here. Chamfer and loathing in Las Vegas. All right, and this. Uh, we need one more uh, here. We're gonna, this is the 2.75. There we go. Yep. Done. All right. And now we add. There we. Now we add this. Ah, uh, I see. So we have that. This little bit right here is causing. Uh, it's causing problems. There we go. Ah, and this is yep. Okay, and now finally we round this off, and Bob is your uncle, which last time we learned the etymology of. Apparently, it's nepotism. It's a nepotism reference. I think so. This looks pretty dece. It's got yeah. It looks a little asymmetrical. But it will look better when the two key and the two halves are combined. We're gonna figure this out. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, oh crap! I haven't updated the to-do list in ages. Come on, to-do list. We're done with this part. Uh, and this we need a check mark. Check. Or designing our split enclosure. There we go. Um, all right. So will we just be able to mirror this to get the other half? I don't think so. I think we're just gonna. I think we're gonna have to. We're gonna have to make the same design changes. But could we just mirror this? Hmm. I don't think we'd just be able to. But I think we could. I think it would be close. Uh, uh yeah. Hmm. Oh, what time is it? It's four o'clock, so we're not gonna be able to do much more um, printing. Not gonna be, yeah, we're not gonna be able to print anything to completion. Ugh. Yeah, everything seems to. You never, you never. It's so hard to tell how long things are gonna take. <sighs> Although I should probably be raising my estimates universally up because I don't think we've 
I don't think we've... I, I, don't, I only think we've had, like, a single stream. Anyway, today's episode is sponsored by NextPCB. I should have shilled for them earlier ago. Uh, yeah, I wish I'd ordered the circuit board from them. Oh, my God. But, uh, yeah, they're... Um, yeah, NextPCB is uh, your place to go if you want. Uh, well, if you've if you've used other PCB services and uh, you're trying to take yourself to the next level, then that's the place to go. I mean, they sell like they do quick turn, uh, they do quick turn high quality boards with stuff like four, they use four layer um, internal routing, uh, fingers, castellated pads, feature features that you know matte solder mask, all kinds of features that you usually have to pay a super high end board house for. Uh, a fortune for they do at their standard prototyping rate and that is rad so yeah if your next so uh yeah for your next project uh use the link in the description or no wait there's no description i have to go to uh here use the link in chat uh to get yourself a coupon for a hundred dollars off your first order which would make this project cost only uh cost only uh, like 20 bucks or so um yeah so uh Thanks a lot to uh, thanks a lot to Next PCB for sponsoring this, for sponsoring the project, and for sponsoring the upcoming episode. Uh, also, um, yeah, I challenge you to make a three D printed wearable for your Hello Wearables contest. Uh, yeah, all you have to do is make it has to be three D printed. It has to be wearable, and you have to post it to things.com tagged Hello Wearable, uh, and the winner uh, the the uh, the winner is going to get a Lulzbot Taz Sidekick 747 $1,500 printer, or same amount of store credit, along with five kilos of filament. We got prize packages for the runners up as well. Plus, the winners and whoever I like is going to show up in a future episode on Void Star Lab. Uh, it, folks are asking, why does it cost so much? Uh, that's the price for 10, uh, for 10 boards. Yeah, that's, that's the rate for 10 boards, which is pretty good. Uh, three boards on... Uh, Oshpar costs about $250. Uh, yeah. It's a fairly large board, too. Remember, it's like, it's it's this big. <laughs> so it's a, it's a fairly large board. But in the meantime, um, yeah. So we got this. We could start printing it, I suppose. Let's do so. Let's print this. Gonna go over here and scrape off the crud. Scrape off the crappy crud. Yeah, print this in our Fusion Filaments HTPET Plus. Oh my god, I can't believe I didn't order them. I don't even know how. Like, am I supposed to talk to them? Because that means that's gonna tack on another three days. My life is completely my life is freaking over. Oh my god. This is such a catastrophic mistake. Ugh. So bur I'm so burned out. This is like not what I need right now. <sighs> well, let's see. Right, it's this bit here. Probably get rid of it. Yeah, this is gonna this is gonna cause a defect when we try to print it. So yeah, this bit right here is gonna cause problems when we try to print it. So let's hide the bottom and let's just hack this part off by extruding. There we go. And we'll make the top part here, send it over Super Slicer, run it off in our HTPET. Oh yeah. Um, I think it was, I don't think it was 120. I think it was actually closer. I think it was actually closer to 200, but still $10 for a two ounce, two ounce, two layer board with matte solder mask and internal tab routing is a pretty friggin' good rate. Like that's twenty bucks for that is nuts. That's really cheap. So uh, yeah, let's. Uh, so we're gonna run this off in Fusion HTPET. Uh, let's run this off faster. Extruder one. We definitely want a brim. We want supports on the plate. And let's send it full send. No, we're not. We're not. We're not. We're not going one hundred percent. I don't think this 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 filament can print really fast, especially for a high for a high temperature filament. It can print really fast, but not like hundred not over a hundred millimeters a second fast. So this is going to take forty five minutes, which is perfect. So let's send it over. Boop. So you can watch my printer. I don't need this anymore. All right. 
So that's one half done. Uh, the other half, I mean, so this is fairly simple. We are just going to open up what we had here, just copy over that, like, just copy it over to the other side, right? <laughs> yeah, we're just, we're just going to copy what we had over to the other half and then go through each operation and just repeat it with its copied counterpart. Super easy, he says. Nothing is ever easy. Everything in Void Star Lab is somewhere between brutally hard and ludicrously brutally hard. And like, dep everything's uh, between like brutally hard and depressingly hard. Maybe, maybe that's, yeah, that's a better way to go about it, saying it. Okay, so we've got, so I'm just going to draw a line in between these. Uh, we're going to make ourselves a center line. We're just going to copy it because we made the same changes to both. Midpoint. Yeah. So we made the same changes. So this should, uh, this should work. 99 millimeters per second. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, thanks a lot to, uh, thanks a lot to Next PCB for sponsoring. Um, yeah. Uh, also, next episode is coming up soon. I can show you what I've done. Maybe, oh, maybe the film is here already. Should we check? Let me check. What? Because I didn't, or I 100% got a I 100% got shipping uh, emails from that. Uh, Matter Hackers is sending me a care package of 10 of the rarest filaments on the planet. Of these, most are the only one... The, the, most of these are uh, the only time I've ever seen them for sale. Updated delivery. Uh-oh. We're delayed. It was supposed to show up today, but we're delayed. Uh-oh. Updated delivery tomorrow by end of day. Expected today. Oh boy, it begins. Oh man. Well, we'll see what goes wrong this time. Uh, anyways, let's get back to uh, get back to this. All right. So we're gonna. So we want to copy all this stuff. Mirror. Let's see. Of course, we want this to be our mirror line. We don't want to copy, we don't want to mirror that line. That line is the mirror. Jeez. Hmm. Uh, mirror line here. All right. We have to select the rest of the geometry, of course. Shouldn't it show me like a, like a preview or something? Mm hmm. Weird stuff's afoot. Oh. Oh. Uh, let's put this here. So let's see. So this is everything. Uh, we made a mistake. Oh, yep, yep, we made a mistake. Uh, yep. Here's, here it is. This. Yeah, so this should be. So the, uh, the center line should be between the board. It should be, yeah, it should be between the two halves of the board. So, there we go. There we are. And over here, let's get rid of this. And uh, this should also go here. And uh, we should have copied everything over. Cool. We, all, we did, almost. We still, we're missing a little bit. I keep hitting M for mirror. How the hell do I still, like, have muscle memory of all of the SolidWorks shortcuts. I haven't used SolidWorks and, and SketchUp because they, they, shared, they shared them. I haven't used either of those programs in like, I don't know, I'm old is what I'm saying. Let's make sure to save this. So we should now be able to go back and uh, everything we did on one, 
everything we did on one half, we should be able to repeat on uh, the other half. I hope. Cool. That's another, another challenge with these streams, he said, continuing to complain, is um, I, never, I never really get to kind of switch my brain off. Like, it's, it's literally five hours of nonstop project, project making and, uh, and talking. So when it's something like this, like making projects, when it's something like building a 3D printer, then it, I, I, you know, I, get, I, get, I get minutes off all the time. But when it's something like this, it's just nonstop cerebral. Oh boy. You know what I tell you I'll tell you what you know what's hard to to do for for an entire straight work day for for eight consecutive hours. Cut video. I don't know what makes it so hard, but holy crap. Uh let's let's hide these boards here because we don't wanna we don't wanna uh oh Let's see. Yeah, we don't want to fuse things together. They're not supposed to. Yeah, making, making video. Cutting video is really hard. It's, yeah. It's really, there are just so many things to keep in, uh, there's so many things to keep in mind. And again, like, the... The consequences for even a minor slip in any of them are the entire purpose of the video is shot. Like, you know, if music is a couple decibels too high, or if a scene tra takes too long to transition, or if I, you know, cut, if a section takes 30 seconds, you know, if a section takes five seconds too long, or uh, a piece of footage is annoying or overused, then, uh, then that's it. The entire video is, you know, people stop watching the whole video, and uh, it's as if I never even made it. What's going on here? I think I should have combined these. Well, doesn't matter now. Yeah, oh man, is that ever hard? Yeah, on all that time cutting video, because like, because like, you know, you gotta, you gotta work really fast, you have to work really fast in order to get the video up as soon as possible. But at the same time, like, you really start hitting a wall when you're cutting video. Like, you start to, you know, your sense of, um, what should I call it? You know, your sense of timing, your, 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 your care, your foresight, you just, your eyes start to cross. You, you know, your eyes start to glaze over. Uh, yeah, but at no point are you ever allowed to um, let up on the pressure, even a, t even a tiny bit. So, man... That is, that's a, that's a, that's a workout. That is a mental workout. Let's see, I missed a line. That's all right. Why, oh, that's, that's smart fusion, reorient my project. So you can't see it. That's exactly what I wanted. Thanks so much for anticipating my needs. Here, cool. Finish it on up. Hey, look what version number we're on. Hey, nice. 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 Yeah. yeah the, 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 the pressure, the pressure really gets to you because like, especially, especially because even in the best of times, my videos take a long time to make. So like I'm, I'm, you know, always, always feel behind schedule. Rough stuff. Not that again. Not not that I'm complaining. I love my, I love my job. And uh, people, I love my job, and uh, a lot of people support me for it and deserve nothing less than the finest. But you know, it's tricky. I don't know what I'm, what I'm saying. It's like rocking a rhyme that's right on time. It's tricky. I missed another line. Speaking of rocking lines that are right on time, uh, which one was it? This one, right? No. Mirror. I'm just going to copy all of them.
think that was it. Mm -hmm. so, so all of this, okay. How the, how's the print going? Seems like it's seems like it's stuck. It's stuck. Uh, Jubon three says perhaps you could take clips of your stream and make a YouTube vid to recap. That will n likely never happen, unfortunately. Remember, the stream is five hours long, so it's going to take a minimum of five hours just to review the footage. Um. Yeah, it's going to take a minimum of five hours just to review the footage. We've tried it in the past, and we found that we just can't stitch the footage together. Like, the nature of the stream, it just fires off in too many directions. And uh, we can't stitch it together into a, a, into a narrative or anything. It, it just... It's not, it's not really pot... It's not really practical, unfortunately. Uh, yeah... At some point, you know, maybe at some point we'll be able to hire, like, an edit, like, an editing team. And, uh, they'll be able to pull that together, but I lack the, uh, I lack the cinematographic ability to, um, to pull, to pull a story out of stuff that's that disconnected. And we, on top of that, there's, we just don't have the time. There's not enough hours in the day. Uh, we're, 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 we're stretched too thin. Yeah, it's it's a really it's a really hard task because you have to yeah it's a really hard task because you're combining like these disparate unrelated basically clips into something that remember ha is held to the same standard of quality as everything else on my channel and uh, just straight up improvise improvised content will never like you can't put improvised content next to produced content and expect them to have the same level of uh expect them to have the same level of polish um and look and on top of all of this the thing that damns all of it is that i'm pretty sure our stream replay channel has like a thousand views total so there just isn't enough interest um you know if hundreds of thousands of people were interested in watching stuff like that hell even tens of thousands it would it would accelerate like it would speed up how we still wouldn't be able to do it, but it would uh, speed up how quickly and how we uh, just it would it would increase how highly we prioritize hiring a professional editor. That's a that's a, that's the other thing. I, I I painted myself into a corner by giving the so our, the videos in Void Star Lab have like a, a a unique flavor, right? Like the they're comedy videos. And they have a they have like a a like yeah a style to them. And that basically means that I can't hire, like, it means that if I were to hire someone to cut my videos for me, they need to be, a, you know, they need to have those skills. And people who have those skills are not going to, they're not going to cut a video for a hundred bucks. <laughs> no, they're going to cut a video for a few thousand bucks. So right, right now it's, uh, right now it's not, right now it's not practical. Maybe in the future, you know. Channels, the channel's always evolving, always looking for, for new and better ways to get stuff done. But, uh, at least for now, we have to be very careful about how we spend our time and money. Because both are... Uh, both need to be deployed strategically. So I think this should be it, right? Why is this line here? What's going on? Why is, why is there a line here? Why is there a line here? There's a very sh there's a very slight angle between these. Why is there an angle? What created this? I'm really really confused. Why did that create an why did that make an angle? Well, hopefully it doesn't cause any problems. But anyways, this looks pretty good. Let's, uh, before something else, before something goes wrong. Let's save. Oh, oh my poor eyes. Uh, let's see. Uh. <laughs>
Could one chamfer be lower than another? I don't think so. Well, no, because like the chamfer is here. Yeah, it's, it's really odd. Is it happening on the other side? It's not, no, no way for it to happen on the other side. Do we want to round this? I just realized that like, we never, we never rounded this corner here. Maybe we should have. Well, this is, look, this is why we prototype, right? Yeah, that, that, I mean, that, that moves some of the design language back in. It's still not, this is still not optimal. We really should have moved the blob part over, but then you can't put the two halves next to each other. Yeah, you know what? We can, we can rationalize this. That's another thing, is if you can rationalize a design, then it helps, um, that's the way of saying it. Be, be, the ability to rationalize a design, oh, that's bad. Yeah, look at that. It's causing, uh, it's causing this break point here. Causing this break, maybe if we, maybe can we, uh, we select it? No. Oh, that's 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 weird. We delete it. Yeah, there we go. Just delete the face. Problem solved. <laughs> there we go. Deleted the face. Problem solved. I keep forgetting you can do that. Like I'm so used to just generating all the geometry. Forget that you can still just click a face and nuke it. Uh, what was I saying before? Wasn't important. Um, yeah, honestly, I don't think, like, uh, most of the fun of a stream is gone when you're not watching it live, right? That's, that's one of the big problems of streaming, making a project instead of, like, playing a game, is that, um, games generate highlights, right? There are, there are plays of the game, there's, uh, you know, like there, there, there are big, there are big plays. There's interesting stuff. There's like you pull something neat off, but uh, it doesn't really work that way in hardware hacker land. The, it's it's really, it's um I guess it's a lot like like a, I guess I should see how people stream like RTS games because, like our like strategy games don't really like strategy games especially like for like. I'm thinking about like 4X games, like Civilization, like Civil, and whatnot. Um, you probably don't have like discrete plays that you would put in a highlight reel. Like a video about it would probably just recap what happened. So, yeah, I'm curious because it's not always like a narrative, right? Like, I don't know. Point is, this point is, is really hard. It would probably take a few days. And let's put it this way: I'm. I'm so over I'm so overwhelmed and our resources are so overcommitted. I haven't even had time to friggin transcode, upload and make a thumbnail for the uh, for the old stream vods. And no, I can't just put them on Twitch because then I have to tell people to go to two places to look at them. And uh, until we become an affiliate, Twitch only saves replays for two weeks. So um, yeah. And on top of that, like in retrospect, it would have been smarter to just put them up on YouTube later and just, you know, make Twitch the place in the short term. But I already told people in a video that I'm putting the replays on YouTube and I already promised my patrons that I do that. So I unfortunately don't have a choice. Uh, following your, your promises is not optional. <laughs> when you, when you, uh, when you promise something, it is no longer something you have a choice in, uh, unless it, uh, you know, of course, if it's damaging the channel that much, I'd, I'd backtrack, but like only if it's like a hey we have to do it this way or like we either we either get this or you get nothing. But we're definitely not at that point yet. So this is looking pretty good. I love this green. I love the filament color. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at our printer. Let's see how we're uh, see how we're doing here. It's looking all right. It's look looking pretty pretty damn good. Pretty damn good. Ah. Uh... Let's see. Uh, Nesta Dream says on these quiet work from home shifts, I do watch entire stream vods. Fair enough. Fair enough. I, I think for the most part, people aren't. Uh, I think it's a combination of um, like this is how this is how like even small things like you know not ordering a board on time can stack up. Is there a limited number of things I can tell people about in an episode? And. Um, 
Yeah, because I basically went a month without making, I went over a month without making a video here. So I only have a limited number of things I can tell people about. So I told people about the switch to Twitch in a video, right? Uh, but now in the next video, I can't really tell people about the, the stream replay channel. Because I'm already telling people about the sponsor. I'm telling people about the, um, telling people about the sponsor. Uh, I'm telling people about the fact that we're streaming on a different platform. And uh, that we have a contest going. So that pretty much locks it out. I, you know, I can't talk about things like the merch. I can't talk about the second channel. Um, I really want to launch the subreddit, but I, again, I don't have any videos to talk about it in. There's only a limited number of uh, things I can talk about in a given video. Part of the fun. So now we're all stacked up and I have more things than I can, uh, have more things than I can promote. It's a real, it's a real issue. I actually should probably make a dedicated video for the Hello Wearables contest, but I think at that point YouTube is going to drop me forever, because obviously the I'm streaming on Twitch video did not do very well on YouTube. Oh boy, never ends. Never ends and nothing is easy. Ah, oh, man. Like, I, I've, I've slowed my pace a little, so I have more time to, to unwind, but that just means we're falling further and further behind. Yeah. More careful with this. Uh, all right, so let's uh, let's take stock of what we've done here. So we've got this thing printing. Uh, we can assemble a keyboard. All the pieces are pretty much done. So yeah, I sh let's move this over here and and clean it up. Right. Switch back to our overhead cam. Turn things around. Uh, the merch store is. Uh, oh, it's hang on a second. Ah, uh, Lednex says, take a page from Linus's book and show the merch store in every video. The merch store is not profitable enough to justify that. Um, yeah, like, how many people could reason, like, reasonably, you can expect to call, um, for every hundred people, basically for every hundred people who hear a call to action, about one percent will take it. And about for every person who enters a purchasing page, about one in five will actually purchase. So that means that give or take one of every 500 people who hears the call to action, so will will watch. It. So most people watch half the videos. So let's about like average video on my channel. Let's say it gets a hundred thousand views, right? So fifty thousand will hear the call to action. One five hundredth of that. Um, hang on, mental mental math is a thousand people total, right? Not less. As, hang on a second. 50,000, so yeah, 50,000 divided by 500, 100 people will actually click through and end up on the merch store. And of those, about 20 will order merch. And the average merch, let's say I make 20 bucks per order. So like, that's a thousand bucks, give, give, or, give or take. That is like, I would benefit, like we'd benefit more by instead getting those people to come to our Discord or to come to the streams or uh, to, yeah, to come to the Discord, come to the streams, uh, or simply subscribe to see future videos. Um, yeah, it's just not, it's just not, a, it's just not enough. Uh, the, the potatoes are too small. Yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the fun. I do try to wear the things as often as possible, but uh, I unfortunately dirtied the, dirtied the shirts while, <laughs> while uh, recording episodes in them. So in the meantime, let's uh, carefully, carefully trim these up, and then we'll uh, we'll put it all together. And yeah, so this is just a mock-up, of course, doing a reality check. I'm still, of course, kicking myself having not ordered that. I'm, oh my god, I'm f angry at everything involved here. I'm angry at myself. I'm angry at my rep. Uh, I'm angry at like all the dilly dallying, lollygagging, and poor productivity that led me to come so close to the wire. Oh, boy. Oh, man. Uh, I hope he... I hope the... I hope the... the, the sp I hope the XPCB isn't mad at me. Like, because we're going to have to delay their video. I hope uh, I hope this doesn't ruin the, uh, ruin the relationship. Uh, oh, well. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, we're going to do the, uh, after this is done, I'm going to go back to work on the every filament video. Uh, we're going to do the first episode. It's going to come out as soon as, uh, I guess it's the limiting factors. Yeah. It's going to be that PEI. 
So now that I know that it could show up tomorrow, I really want to finish as much as, po as possible. PEI is a, uh, it's basically the ultra, it's basically has the best temperature resistance, more or less, of any filament you can print. Uh, yeah, you can, it's, what's, it's what they use to make the, uh, to make the beds so that your prints don't stick to them. Let's see. Yeah, this bad idea if i were to make this again which i guess i will uh basically when i make this for real i'm going to use like snap off or dissolvable support material yeah we're going to use dissolving support material so we can get perfect bridges and overhangs actually now i'm thinking about it for when we're doing this for real i'm just going to just going to print in pla i would prefer to print in pet for my own use because it's more rugged but pla looks nicer and again, I want people to share the project, which, of course, you know, only going to do if it looks good. On top of all of that is a mechanical keyboard project. And the mechanical keyboard community is so freaking nitpicky. Like, your... I... Truth is, when we, when we go to sell this, I'm, I'm realizing that my own photography skills aren't up to the task. Because for a mechanical keyboard, uh, mechanical keyboard, like... In order to get people to take it seriously, we're gonna need to hire a professional and do a, like a proper, like a proper photo shoot. Don't worry about that screwdriver. This is the whacking screwdriver. It's there for whacking. That's what it's. That's what it does. That's why I have it. Let's be very careful with this. Let's see. I think this filament's starting to become a little bit waterlogged. You know how crispy that sounded? Yeah, PLA is, or PETG is an amorphous polymer. So it doesn't normally form into crystals. And uh, yeah, if it starts to get waterlogged, or there, basically if, there, are a few pro there are a few problems that can happen that will uh, really kind of trash its properties. And you can often tell because a material that should be flexible becomes crispy and crystalline. Yeah, this should be enough. Let's punch this through as well. Then we'll, uh, then we'll pull this whole thing together. Come on. This material material's sticking to itself too well. It's, that, it's those layer bonds. This material would be great for Nerf blasters. Oh, man. Good nerf, cool, cool nerf blasters. Uh, Jeff Hardy 56 x says, I have the completely insane, unfeasible desire to mill out the case instead of printing it. I mean, it's only unfeasible if you don't have a mill. <laughs> uh, it should work. I mean, yeah. you might have to, you might have to do some drilling by, ha by hand. But yeah, I think you'd be able to mill this out. I don't see why not. I suppose we could load it into, I suppose we could pull up, uh, like Fusion has an analysis tool for this that uh, detects if you can make... It, it looks for undercuts, basically. It looks for things that you wouldn't... Details you wouldn't be able to reproduce if uh, all you could do is move a tool left, right, top, rough, left, right, left, right, up, down, uh, higher, and lower. So we could, we could check. But I think we'd definitely be able to mill this. This doesn't have any undercuts. I generally try to avoid undercuts anyways, because um, they need to be like they need to be supported. So um, yeah, ain't nobody got time to remove support material. All right, let's just trim off all little bits and blobs, and uh, let's see. this should bottom out. See, got a couple, a couple bits of crud getting in the way, but otherwise, it's looking pretty good. Uh, the reason why I'm using this uh, this green color is because the boards are supposed to be matte black. So I think normally, you know, you have a green circuit and a black case. I think it would be neat to kind of invert it. Yeah, that would be pretty sick. Uh, Arrow Raider says, would a Dremel work on this or just heat up the plastic and drag it around? Uh, uh, on this particular material, a Dremel would probably work well because this is a high temperature material. Uh, yeah, it's it's PET, it's high temperature PETG, so it's um, 
It's, uh, yeah, it's high temperature PETG, so I think it would actually mill really, or it would actually work really well with a Dremel. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not ready to bust that out yet, because Dremel's very noisy. And I, uh, I don't want to, you know, obliterate your eardrums. Being very gentle here. Don't want to, I want to be kind to your listening holes. All right, in retrospect, I probably should have ironed this. We'll do that next time. Ironing basically drags the nozzle across filament, across the top layer after it's been printed to flatten it and even it out. It looks, it looks, things that have been ironed look quite nice. So let's then move on to the other half. Yes, you can see how, you can see how much, how much time is wasted when even a tiny bit of support material, um, when even a tiny bit of support material makes its way in. Yeah, in retrospect, like, if I wasn't trying to show you this, this project, I would have just thrown this in the trash and did it over without the support material, but I, I think, uh, especially folks who've been here the whole stream, I think you're owed a chance to see what we're making. Ah, oh, yeah. Got to be careful when I have a project when I have a project to do along with videos because there's a problem. I've only like this is such a common problem and I've only heard someone talk about it once. The issue is called bike shedding. Basically, you work on something that you want to do instead of you work on a task that you want to do instead of a task that you need to do. It's like a form of procrastination. Bike shedding because uh, like you know instead of cleaning the house, you're just tinkering in the bike shed. So. So no one can tell you what chores to do. So if you tell, so if someone's like, "Hey, you know, you should be like doing the dishes," you say, "Oh, I can't. I'm I'm working on my bike." Yeah. It's uh, it is a form of procrastination, and something that I am very vulnerable to. I I've, I forget where I heard someone talking about it, but I had never heard i never heard it mentioned before, and it's something that causes me so much trouble, and I'm sure it causes many of you trouble. Called bike shedding. So when I have a project uh, to work on, even for especially for an episode, I tend to bike shed and put too much time into it, to the expense of you know other things like you know social media, pre preparing for streams, putting up old you know formatting old content, reaching out to sponsors, doing stuff for the patrons. It's really tricky. So yeah, that's part of why I decided to do the streams in the first place. So hopefully, it allows me to do both. I can work on the project and I can and I, I can do so without locking myself in the bike shed and avoiding all my other responsibilities. So this is looking pretty decent. It's pretty decent. So here, let's uh, let's see what this pro let's see what this thing is going to look like. I'm not going to screw it. I'm not going to waste heat sets heat set fasteners on this cuz I don't know how not going to waste heat set fasteners on this because I don't know how much, um, how many changes we'll have to make. But yeah, so we'll put these guys. So the board goes in here. You can see that it's, it's kind of like, it's kind of like, uh, left exposed at the bottom because, because we're nerds and we think circuit boards are cool. And then we've got the top part. To complete the look, we have our cosmetic plate. And that's also going to cover the screws. Giving it this really cool no fastener look. So what do you think? This is a first look at the, the Void Star Lab Mirage. Stay together, please. Maybe I should have screwed it together. This plate's gonna stay on with magnets. What do you think? The purple does glow in the dark uh, aerator, but only only a little bit. Oh right, of course I have to put the. We're gonna have, we're gonna have OLED just oh, like OLED buttons and a uh, whole bunch of whole bunch of key switches. Yeah. Isn't that, isn't that neat? Isn't that sick? I think that's sick. Uh, let's, yeah. 
So this is uh, this looks like it's printing. It's coming together. Uh, so let's see, we got a few few minutes left. All right. I think this is about as far as I can. Uh, I guess we could make the nameplates for the the two handed version. Um, yeah, I actually I just realized that for the uh, one handed version, I probably want to put the. <clears throat> Uh, f or for the for the one piece version, one handed. For the one piece version, I probably uh, do not need to put the headphone jacks on there. So I think for the release uh, version, we'll just suppress that. I think they'll, but then that'll cause all kinds of problems. Maybe I'll just fill it in. Ah, Dills has highlighted uh, some sort of husky. I don't know the names of all the emotes. I'm not I'm not up with my Twitch emotes. Uh, Sandman says, why do I feel like a full-size one and an obnoxious pink would look amazing? That would look amazing. I don't have an obnoxious pink. I have an obnoxious red <clears throat> that looks pink in a certain light. But, yeah, I don't want to buy any new filaments because I'm going to have a lot of them. Let's see, lightweight ASA, black. Yeah, all these filaments are, like, all these filaments are black because they're, they're engineering filaments. <laughs> Maybe Brooke can convince me. But yeah, we're going to have a little clackety-clacker. I think I need to add another row of keys on it. Uh, I, think I, should, I think I should add another row of keys, because right now it only has 57 keys. So in particular, the arrow keys aren't going to have... Um, there aren't dedicated arrow keys, and I, I'm not sure that's acceptable. i got to remember that most people who are going to... i got to remember that most people who are going to end up building this project... Are not key. Or they're not key heads, right? Because because people who like are into mechanical keyboards are gonna look at this thing and they go, "Ew, kale chalks. Ew, it's got screens on it." So uh, yeah, it's probably gonna be for people who do not have a keyboard, and I don't think those people are gonna be okay giving up their arrow keys. Uh, yeah, fifty-seven might be a little low. Could add, we could add another row that would make this a bit deeper. Maybe we could add a fourth screen on uh, to make that happen. Yeah. Uh, well, it comes down to whether people want to buy it or not. And uh, there's only one first impression. If the first thing people hear about the keyboard is it doesn't have arrow keys, we're in trouble. If the first thing people hear is it's got three screens, uh, Dom Rendolo... Dom Rendolo says keyboard people don't like screens. No, uh, no, they don't because most screens used in keyboards, uh, basically you don't need one, right? Really the only, the, the really the only purpose for a screen on a keyboard is to replace the caps lock, num lock and uh, scroll lock buttons. And most of those, they just don't include them in the first place. Some of them include uh, screens to show layers, but even still like they're viewed as a gimmick. So, yeah, they're viewed as a gimmick. In this case, they're buttons as well. This is a unique feature in, in DIY mechanical keyboards, that the screens are also buttons. So, um, yeah, they're, they're not going to like that very much. But, yeah, as for fold-out feet, there's no room for fold... For, there's no room for... First, there's no room for fold-out feet. Second off, you shouldn't put feet on... You shouldn't put... You shouldn't incline your keyboard anyways. It's, um... It's bad ergonomics shouldn't incline your keyb. I think I will make, uh, maybe I'll put like, like recesses. I, like, I think I'll put recesses in it so you can either put little rubber feet in there or you can glue in a magnet and, you know, put it in a tray of some kind. I, I'd prefer not to make, for, I prefer not to make like incl inclination and wrist rests a first class feature in part because it takes time and I'm out of time but also uh, because it's bad ergonomics. Wrist rests are bad for your... Wrist rests um, can give you carpal tunnel because they're pinching your nerve... Uh, you know, they're, pinch they're pinching your nerve between your... Is it tibia, I think, and your wrist rest? I do have wrist rests on my computer or on my keyboard, but that is only because... Uh, that's only because I don't really like the... I don't, that's a way of saying it. Like, it's very... It has a steel, like, so this is a steel plate. My, my keyboard has a, here, there we are. Yeah, so my keyboard has uh, a steel plate that holds the wrist rest, but 
it's only acrylic if you take the wrist rest off and i find it feels very flexy and just not not nice so uh yeah but um i'll definitely like i, I don't think i'm gonna add them myself but i will add provisions to make it easier for you to do so if you'd like yourself yeah you can also tilt it backwards that's that's very comfortable Work says your tibia is in your leg. Yeah, I don't know it. I don't know anatomy. I, I only know electronics. I only know things I've modified, and I don't want to admit that I have modified a human skeleton. Did you know that every single person has a spooky skeleton inside them? Uh, Robocop says, uh, hello, love your YouTube content. Wanted to come check out a stream. Well, welcome. Uh, welcome aboard. Been following since the world's smartest Nerf gun video. Oh, that is the most ancient of history. Oh, man. That is such a bad video. It's such a bad video. It's terrible. It's horrible. You can't hear anything. The music's too loud. Oh, I recorded all of it. So the webcam that... All right, so check this out. You want to... Here's a little bit of, uh, here's a little bit of, tri of uh, trivia for you. This webcam right here that's been relegated to printer duty on the printer I barely use anymore is the webcam that I filmed that entire episode on. That whole episode was filmed on this exact, uh, this exact camera that you see right here. Yep. Oh wait, I don't want that. Okay, so um, actually, let's uh, let's make let's embiggen let's embiggen our our three D three D print. It's looking pretty good. Yeah. Although it doesn't look like the uh, the brim made contact with it. That's really weird. Seems like a few lines of the brim never printed. A bit of our support material never printed either. It's probably a good thing, to be honest. So, um, yeah. I think this is going to be pretty... Uh, it's going to be pretty neat. Uh, we're definitely going to have to modify some of the dimensions for the nameplate, though. Because um, it's not laying flat. It was too hard to assemble and it snapped. Uh, so I think I'll make the nameplate... There we go. I think I'll make the nameplate thicker. Uh, we'll Im we'll uh, embiggen the slots that the, letters, uh, that the letters go into. So that uh, it's more tolerant of printers with... Um, they're less precise. We'll have to split this up into... Split this up into two uh, into two pieces for the uh, the two-handed version. That's pretty pretty cool. There are a few changes we have to make to the board too. The thing that's really chafing my nipples about all this is that I didn't want the version. I didn't want to only make one revision of this board, right? Because it's really the number of decisions you have to make to make a circuit board is too high for any human to make them all effectively in a reasonable period of time. So every circuit board is going to have mistakes. And this one is no exception. I really wanted to be able to spin a second revision, but I don't know. Maybe I'll split this into two episodes. Maybe I'll split this into two episodes. Nameplate right now is only two millimeters, so I, I think I'll, I think maybe I'll make it three or three or more. Uh, Kursko one asks, "What's the green filament?" This is fusion. This is fusion filaments HTPET plus in radium green. Yeah, isn't it's it's like almost void star green. Almost. It's just a little it's just a little little too white. It's a, it's it's just a little bare it's if it was a little more intense, it would be perfect. Actually, could we uh let's see, do I have enough of these to tie up? I don't really think so. And do I have enough of these um screw uh boss things? I don't think so cuz the yeah, the ones I I made I made a mistake. I bought too many of these. Sandman one two three four five six seven says, "If I sent you an image of my keyboard, would you consider making a three D printed version?" I already am making a three D printed keyboard. I don't know. I don't know how your keyboard factors into that. No, I'm not building your project for you. Get bent. People have been offering to pay me to build their projects. People have been offering to pay me more than I was making before for me to build their projects, and I have to turn all of them down because I don't even have time to build my projects. <laughs> uh, no one on, no one in, you're welcome to ask that on the Discord, but no one's going to build your project for you. Um, yeah, plus, like, I mean, tracing something is, as far as jobs, as far as uh, tasks go, 
tracing uh, a project is not um, or tracing a keyboard doesn't sound like a very challenging one. So, yeah, I don't think you're gonna get a lot of sympathy. That said, I, I think you should just go for it. Like you just build it yourself, because uh, I don't think it'll be a very difficult project. Let's see. Yeah, maybe I should. These are M2 screws left over from the hypervisor. These are M2.5 screws left over from the left over from a uh, uh, what should we call it? Uh, left over from a Nerf blaster. And I bought all of these, but they're they're far too they're far too long. These are enormous heat set inserts. They're like a full two millimeters bigger, like. Like two millimeters or so bigger than they need to be. So I got to order more of these things. I like making stuff. Making stuff is fun. Yeah. Uh, you could try to, I mean, maybe like you do that. That sounds like a fiber type of thing. Like, it sounds like a fiber type thing. Just make a job to just trace this in your CAD program of choice. And, you know, offer 20 bucks or something. You'll find, you'll find someone. As for, as for me, uh, break, broke my screens. So we got to order more of these. Um, got to print fresh, fresh screens here. We have to actually order the boards. There's a lot to do here, but most importantly, uh, I need to work on my next episode. So I think we're going to start wrapping up. Um, I think we're going to start wrapping up. This is the last, I keep saying like last chance to, to ask questions and nothing happens. And, and then, you know, 10 minutes, you know, like, as I start to wind down, people um, uh, people make something up, so I'm going to be very clear. We're ending the stream soon. Ask it this very second, or get Ben. Uh, Craft Xbox asks, what kind of MCU are you using? Uh, we are going to be using the Seedwino. The reason I'm saying, yeah, so we're going to try, so I'm going to try to make this uh, work with the Seedwino Zhao RP2040, because this uses a Raspberry Pi uh, you know, use a, a basically Raspberry Pi Pico. It's super easy to program. People are getting really into it. It's uh, it's a very inexpensive board, and uh, most importantly, you can update the firmware without having to install anything, without needing any bootloaders, without needing any programmers, without needing any IDEs. You just log into it, like you just open it up. It's a flash drive. You open up the text file, and now you can edit the firmware, add new key maps, all that good stuff. So we're going to try to do the RP2040, but all the Raspberry Pi products are out of stock everywhere. So there's a high chance that we're going to have to fall back on using the Seedwino Zhao, maybe with the Sam uh, the Sam D21. But I'm going to try to I'm going to design around the RP2040, and it should work. Uh, Supercar Tofel asks, are you using CircuitPython? I am. I prefer to use MicroPython, but it's just not there yet. Oh, it's a puppy. Uh, Victor CM just subscribed. Thank you very much, Victor CM. You kicked butt. Here, let's, uh, let's, adjust. Here, let's see if I can adjust this to get a good a good puppy cam. Hey there. Oh, sorry for kicking you in the head, Dreadpire Robert. Robarks. How you doing? How you doing, little guy? How you doing, pup? How are you doing? Oh, do you want to tell me? You want tummy rubs? He wants tummy rubs. Oh, hang on a second. Tummy rubs. All right. Can you roll over? Can you show everyone your roll over? <gasps> roll over. Roll over. Come on. Show me your roll. Good boy. Sometimes it takes a little, a little assistance. Oh, he's licking me all over. He loves me. He doesn't. Robert doesn't like streaming days. He doesn't like streaming days because he doesn't get to spend much time with me. Oh, who's... Are you a good boy? Are you a good boy? I mean, if you keep on clawing me, you're not a very good boy. All right. Ah, oh, what a good boy. Oh, he knocked off my... He knocked off my, uh, my belt, my belt pack. Please don't eat anything off the floor. Uh, Alt Dills 42 asks... A question I'm glad someone asked. Can I design a dog wearable? You certainly can. I never said the wearables had to be uh, had to be for humans. It says specifically in the rules that it has to uh, that the wearable has to mount. Oh, oh, there we go. Yeah, the wearable has to mount to a consenting living creature. Uh, so as long as your dog is okay with it, as long as it's your dog and they're okay with it, and the dog is alive, 
then um, yes, you're allowed to. Uh, then you're allowed to make dog wearables. I would love if you made dog wearables. That would be great. Because if you make dog wearables, I'm gonna try to make this guy wear them. It would be great. Uh, Dills forty two. Uh, wait, Dills forty two. I just checked out your question. Uh, I don't have any treats in here. Uh, Craft Xbox asks, will the MCU even have enough pins? It sure will, because we're using I/O expanders. This is not matrixed. Yeah. Oh. That's not what I wanted to show. Uh, let's switch over to the auxiliary cam for silliness. Ox, ox, ox. There we go. Yeah, so uh, we are using um, I.O. expanders instead of matrixing. And the reason we're doing this is because first, it'll make it easier to assemble because you don't have to solder diodes anymore. And on top of that, it means that we only need two pins, uh, right? Uh, we only need two pins, serial clock and serial data. Uh, to con to read every single key using I/O expanders, but it gets better. If you'd like to build this into your own project, just don't install this. Uh, there's going to be a breakout header right here that'll just let you attach the keyboard straight to your own project and read it using your code. Yeah, I'm trying to make the ultimate hackable keyboard here. So um, yes, excellent, excellent question. Uh, Z Keepas asks, what's the weirdest filament you found? Oh, man, I could fill an entire episode with this. And in fact, I'm going to fill an entire episode with this. Yeah. So the next every filament episode that I'm working on right now is the most advanced filaments. And uh, those are all filaments with some property that goes above and beyond anything else in its, like, just anything else in its category. Filaments that just blow apart records. The next one is going to be uh, special purpose filaments, filaments that enable you to print otherwise unprintable stuff. The one after that, though, is going to be the weirdest filaments. And that one has some seriously... Oh, man. Ah, oh, there's some stuff. There's one you grow plants on. That one's, that one's awfully weird. Um, yeah, there's... Um, there are a few that, get, that change density depending on how hot you print them, which is pretty bizarre. Oh, man. The uh, the metal filled filaments are pretty weird. Uh, considering they don't really, I don't know why you'd use them. They're very expensive. They have none of the properties of the metal. <sighs> Man. Anyways, we're gonna fill a whole episode with that. The fourth one is gonna be filaments of the future, and that's gonna be like cutting edge materials. Not necessarily, yeah, just cutting edge materials that might take off in the future. Might not. Uh, might not even exist yet. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be neat. Let's see what's going on here. Uh, Alternate Flux asks, is there a latency penalty for going with I.O. expanders? There shouldn't be. Uh, there shouldn't be. I mean, it's a 400 kilohertz signal. Like, it's 400 kilohertz signal. Uh, it's going to take... Let's see, there are... Each one's reading 48, so there are going to be 7 bytes that it's receiving. So, we'll definitely be able to... We'll definitely be able to pull this thing well over... Uh, we should be able to pull this thing, like... What's, what's the cutoff? Like, you want to pull more than 200, 200 hertz, right? Like, we're definitely going to be more. Uh, let's see once more. Uh, Professor Snuggle says, uh, Zach, did you ask things about documenting your Hello Wearables project on the wiki? Uh, you should be able to. Yeah, uh, you, should, you should be able to. They don't, yeah, they don't, have a, they don't have a problem with it. Uh, things, isn't really, things isn't really set up right now to, um, to handle step-by-step -step instructions. So... Um, I think it's the way to go. You should be able to. It should be open to everyone. It's, it's the open source version of the Dozuki. Uh, it's open source Dozuki thing, or it's Dozuki for open source. Point is, I don't think there's any way for me to actually restrict access. So you should be able to. So um, yes, I believe you can. Uh, Jeff Hardy five six 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 five asks, "You're going to show your entire fleet of Benchies at the end of the filming episode." I've been thinking about what to do with them, because before I had them all in this, I uh, put them all in this frame up here, but the frame can't fit anymore, it's full. I don't know what to do with them. I might just, I might just line them all up and show all of them. Uh, I might, it would be neat to make some sort of display or something. Uh, to, like with like a little nameplate to show what they are. I might just throw them all out or pile them up or, I don't, I don't actually know what I'm going to do with them. I'll have to figure it out to figure that out. One thing I would like to do is one thing I'd like to do and it, like I, I don't have the time for this I'm, and I'm, I'm thinking my, my maybe this is a good thing to hire an editor for is basically to take the every film and episodes and split them up into 30 to 45 second like quick videos 
and uh, put them all in TikTok so people can learn a little bit about filament while they, you know, get in incentivized to steal soap dispensers and fall off milk crates and start bar fights and whatever, whatever the cool kids are doing these days on TikTok. Let me answer a couple more before we end for the we're in for, for the Z day. Fill a bathtub with them. We don't have that. Z keeper. We don't have that many benchies. There aren't that many benchies. In total, like across both across both these episodes, once all is said and done, we're gonna have somewhere in the neighborhood of 150 total benchies. Which, I you know you, it's not, it's it takes a while to print all those, right? Like it's a lot of filaments, but definitely not a bathtub full. It would be it would be nice though. Oh, the 3D printed headphones. That's right. I shared them on Instagram, I think. Um, I shared them somewhere, but yeah, check them out. You people wanted disgusting vomit color. You get disgusting vomit color. There we go. These are the Hedamame headphones in purple, purple, green, red, orange, blue. I don't want any colors touching each other. To be complimentary. Yep, they actually sound pretty. They sound pretty good. Uh, I used so the purple is PLA, or the purple is ABS, and the green is the same high temperature P, uh, PET. But uh, they have about the same density, which means they have almost identical like sound absorption. They, they, they sound, but basically each can sounds the same. Tulum says print a giant benchy to hold the benchies. Well, now that I have this BQ three hundred mil cubic millimeter monstrosity like i could print a real big benchy like before it was limited by the prusa could only print a 200 something millimeter benchy but now we can make a a giant one that would take days to print days oh my god but maybe maybe we will maybe we'll print a giant benchy i do like large things the question is which filament to use because a benchy that big would probably use up a whole, like a whole spool Benchies all the way down, says Arahuan. That is true. Uh, 1.75 millimeter nozzle. Oh boy, you can get a 1.75 millimeter nozzle. You just need to feed 2.8 millimeter filament into it. Um, yeah, so anyways, this project's coming along well. Uh, thanks a lot to NextPCB for sponsoring it. I'm going to be getting in touch with them as soon as this ends uh, to have some words and to order my uh, to order my boards. So yeah, it's for a future episode. This project, uh, so what are we going to do next? So this particular project is in a pretty good spot. I think I'll run off the remainder of the parts and we'll assemble them next episode, perhaps. But that only take, you know, only take a few minutes, maybe. Uh, anyways, like, yeah, we'll order those. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, so that's for a future episode. Uh, next stream, what are we going to do here? Uh, it's supposed to be a things video. Oh, crap. All right, so yeah, I was supposed to release the video of the cyber deck this Saturday, which needless to say is not happening. Our entire schedule is so borked. I'm over a month behind. Uh, yeah, so we're going to be working a lot of videos uh, this Friday. We're probably going to write the code for the keyboard. I think that's the, I think that's the thing to do. We're going to, um, yeah. I think the thing to do is this Friday, uh, we're going to write the code for this. And um, yeah, I have to figure out exactly how to do that. It's a tricky project. Anyways, I now have to do a whole bunch of... Uh, now, I have to, now I have to go to editing some, uh, some footage. And a certain pupper needs, a, needs to take... Uh, I think he needs to take a certain biological function. So, thanks to everyone who subscribed and got us off to a super strong start. Thanks to everyone who followed. Thanks... Uh, Thanks to everyone who's been here for the first time and supported me in building my projects. Uh, yeah, you're probably going to see me next in a stream, but I'm going, I'm, I'm fighting as hard as I can to have this video done by the end of the week. Uh, so thanks to everyone for watching. Thanks for being here. And I will see you in the future.